All right. All right, thank you. I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, Joe, would you please call the roll? Sure. Uh, Rich Roberts. Here. Ryan Allard. Here. Joseph Hammer here. Uh, Jim Hughes. Yes. George Oikel. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Here. Dave Edwards. Here. Michael Vieira. David Drake. Here. Peter Lambruni. Here. Hazim Korkatovic. Not here. All right, so we have eight regular members and two alternates. Um, unless Mike shows up, I'll just I'll just sort of alternate sitting the alternates so that uh, uh, nobody's feeling like they're wasting their time. Um, we have on the agenda several public hearing items tonight. The way we handle the public hearings is um, first we hear from the applicant, they make their presentation, then there's discussion back and forth with the commission. Once that portion of the hearing is uh, concluded, we open it up to members of the public who wish to comment on the application or who may have questions. Any of the questions should be directed to the commission. It shouldn't precipitate a back and forth with the applicant or with commission members. Um, you know, we'll just hear from the public at that point. Depending on whether there are uh, other particular issues that have been raised during the course of the public hearing, we may go back to having a conversation um, between the commission members and the applicant. If, the, uh, if after that the commission believes they have enough information on which to evaluate the application and act on it, um, we will vote to close the public hearing, at which point no more testimony from either the applicant or the members of the public is permitted. Um, you know, depending on uh, what time it is and, and other things, we may uh, either deliberate on the application at that point or continue it to a future meeting. If after the public comment portion and the back and forth between the applicant and the commission and staff, there are still uh, significant open items in terms of uh, issues that need to be resolved or additional information that needs to be provided. Uh, we may uh, elect to continue the public hearing to our next meeting, which I believe is Wednesday, November 3rd, 7 o'clock. Uh, and it'll either be here in little boxes or at the town hall, one or the other. Um, so that's you know that's how we're going to going to run the public hearings. Um, the public should either raise your hand physically or use the raised hand feature so that we can um, you know kind of manage it. Uh, there are a lot more people here tonight than than we've had at some of the prior meetings, so I would uh, ask your patience and indulgence in. Uh, waiting and being recognized just so that we can we can uh, you know make sure that we hear from everybody uh, in an orderly manner um, i think just to start things off i'd like to uh, entertain a motion to take section 3.5 um, item 3.5 public hearing on the ocean state job lot out of order for the sole purpose of continuing that public hearing to Wednesday, November 3rd, 2021. The applicant has requested that we not open it tonight. I'll, I'll make, make that, that motion. Advocate. I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, motion by uh, Jim Hughes, seconded by Tony Homicki. Uh, for this vote, I will seat Dave Drake. Uh, all in favor of continuing the hearing on application 3021Z to our November 3rd meeting, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 
abstentions. Okay. Um, now we'll kind of revert back to the regular order. Item 3.1, a public hearing application 209621Z. O Sauce and Cheese LLC DBA Luna Pizza, 181183 Main Street, special permit in accordance with section 52F1 for a takeout restaurant, a walk in cooler, and storage shed at 181 to 183 Main Street. Uh, is there someone here on behalf of the applicant? And if so, just please give us your name and address for the record before you uh, make your presentation. Well, uh, we're actually the applicants. Um, my name is Stephanie Sullivan. This is my husband, Alex McDonald. Hello. And we are um, at 181 to 183 Main Street in Weathersfield. Okay. So we are applying for the special permit for a takeout restaurant um, for Luna Pizza through our company, Dose Sauce and Cheese LLC. Um, one thing I want to make really clear based on just some of the public comments we saw in the last couple of weeks was that although we're applying to do takeout, we are at heart a small family restaurant. And that's basically why we're so excited to um, look towards the partnership with the Old Town Cafe, and essentially use their bar as our dining room, um, and then the patio seasonally as well. So one of the things in our architectural drawing from the architect is there's space at the front of the restaurant. We're gonna take down the wall between ourselves and Old Town. And that's gonna allow more tables for them in their bar area and also allow us to, when we cook the food, bring it over and serve it to their customers um, more easily. So- it, it will feel more of a, an open space if no matter what door you entered, you'd be entering into the Old Town or to Luna Pizza and you would see tables and chairs, the bar um, and ordering from us, we would be solely responsible for serving those tables taking care of all of the, the customers, even if they were uh, just sitting at the bar, it would, it would be um, our business and our staff members welcoming them in and uh, taking care of the, the patio as well as the bar area. So if you entered the old town, you could look to your left and see um, our counter space in our, our area. Um, and if you entered the Luna Pizza door, you could look to the right and see the old town clearly. Um, and then the other part of our application is for the walk-in cooler and a storage shed directly behind um, what was previously the Old Town restaurant that we're looking to make Luna Pizza. So the walk-in and the storage shed are both 10 by 10. The walk-in would be used for cold food storage. That's a requirement of the health department. And then the storage shed would be used for dry storage, um, pizza boxes, cups, paper towels, things like that. Um, we did go before the Historic Commission last week and their request in approving the application was to make sure that there was fencing around the walk-in and the storage shed, just visually um, to improve it and also to make it more secure. Um, so we can definitely agree to that. As part of the application of changing to um, uh, takeout, um, we know that there's um, uh, parking um, and we had applied for uh, uh, temporary um, or will apply for temporary uh, permanent 15 minute parking right directly in front that could help service um, the takeout aspect of the business. Um, I know in our application, we mentioned using third party delivery services. Um, it, the space that we have in West Hartford, we use them. And the biggest problem that I have with them is accountability. And one of the reasons that we, um, we had that on the application here is because we thought that well, you know, like we wanted to be totally forthright and forthcoming with our, our application. Um, it, we also use our own in-house delivery service. Uh, I have uh, about eight delivery drivers on staff and um, we added the third party because of the pandemic. Um, and we know that, that it's not gonna last forever. We understand that. I, I, I like my in-house delivery service. I like my guys way better. Um, they, they, uh, they're there when I need them to be there. Uh, so we could, um, we can be open to yeah, that because we, we could, understand concerns about congestion on Main Street and parking. Um, another aspect of our application that a lot of people raised questions about was the state of the back parking lot owned by Old Town. Um, we initially thought our, we could direct our customers to the Keeney lot, the lot behind the fire station, and then the lot behind Old Town. Um, through discussions with Peter and some other members of, um, of the town, we were thinking that it would probably be best 
not to have our customers park in the back there just because it is only a one-way driveway and we don't want to create additional congestion on Main Street. Um, our hope is that a lot of our customer base will be either current Old Town customers and then also part of why we chose Old Weathersfield was we loved the walkability and the residential nature of it. Um, the whole vibe of the town, as Alex said, our one location now is in West Hartford, which is much bigger, um, a little more, more metropolitan. And we really like kind of a smaller, um, quieter. quieter. We like that, that aspect of the village. So we wanna definitely help maintain that. No, I think, okay. I think, um, I think, yeah. yeah. I think that's about it. I, I think one thing that would be helpful is you, you've kind of jumped around on a whole bunch of responses to comments to the application. If you could just kind of take a take a quick step back sure. and presuming that there are some people either on the call or on the commission who, you know, haven't had the opportunity to, to fully digest your application. If you could just sort of run through what exactly it is that you're proposing to do, I think that would be helpful. Sure. Um, well, in the space, um, I think it's 181. Um, we have uh, two pizza ovens, um, and after after thinking about that a little bit more, uh, we could change that to make it like one pizza oven. Um, the reason why I put two um, on that application is I'd like to be over over prepared, um, and rather than under deliver, uh, so it. I would like to like that's why that there's two there, um, and now walking cooler is outside because you need to cool foods properly, prepared foods properly. The storage shed is outside as well. To there's the minimum space in that in that area. If we were to put the walking cooler, it would eliminate everything. Um, it, it would be very difficult to run a restaurant without the walking cooler outside. So our basic premise is. We've owned and operated a Luna Pizza in West Hartford Center for um, 12, 13 years. 13 years. Um, so our basic premise is to, we'd love to come to the village in, in Old Weathersfield and we do pizza. We also do um, pasta, wings, Italian comfort food. We do do a lot of, um, we have a large dining room that we renovated in West Hartford a couple of years ago. So the dining, family dining is a big part of that for us. Um, because the space was small, it doesn't allow for putting in the pizza ovens and enough tables to really have a full service restaurant. That's why we thought the partnership with the Old Town would allow us to kind of have the best of both worlds there, have the equipment that we need to make the pizza, um, fry the wings, make the pasta, and then also be able to serve sit down customers. And then of course, since it's pizza, um, also have the takeout aspect of our business, which understandably did grow more during COVID. So we do feel comfortable with that. Um, and again, you know, when we walked around Old Weathersfield ourselves before signing this lease, we really liked that there were so many residential neighborhoods around and we're hoping since it seems like a lot of people bike and walk around, people can walk, people can enjoy the scarecrows, all the other things that I know the town is um, working on offering and then either come into Old Town and have pizza or they can order pizza to take home with them. So that's kind of our vision that we're looking at. Um, and I know the patio too has been expanded or used more during COVID, but I think, just my own understanding of the way that people's um, habits have changed. I feel like more people are looking to dine outside. So maybe in the future, looking at permits for things like heaters, things like that to make more year round outdoor dining accessible would could add a lot to the space. So that's, I think the basic premise for what we're looking to do is a small family um, Italian restaurant, pizza restaurant, and then with a special permit add takeout as an option as well. Okay, thanks. Um, have you had a chance to review the, the memo from the town engineer dated October 18th? Um, yeah, we just received that. The, there, so we've just begun um, kind of going through that. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think the, you know, the key points in that are, relate to the, the narrow driveway to the, to the rear Old Town parking lot. Yes. Um, they also asked for clarification on the short term parking spaces, um, as well as where the employees would be directed to park and uh, information on whether the peak hours of operation for the old town coincide with your anticipated peak hours of, of, of business. And do you have any thoughts on those points? 
Um, as far as the hours, our initial thought, our hours in West Hartford were open until 10 o'clock. We are not, part of why we're not applying for a liquor license or anything like that is that we're not um, in the business of, of serving alcohol and being a bar ourselves. So initially, uh, I believe in our application, we said we would close at 10 o'clock on Friday, Saturday, nine o'clock the other days. Um, in speaking with Andy, I, I don't see a huge um, business after those hours for food necessarily. So we aren't planning on having our employees there at you know one o'clock in the morning or anything like that. Um, as far as the parking, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like that is um, the biggest issue maybe in the village in terms of concerns about the one-way driveway, the state of the parking lot in the back. Um, again, since we just got the memo yesterday, we haven't really decided yet what the best place for our employees to park would be. Um, we did think that having the two spots directly out front, um, which we emailed a little bit with Bonnie about, but we haven't um, been able to actually apply and get clarification with that. We were hoping to have like 15 minute spots, two of them directly in front. And again, this is something that we just started doing in West Hartford during the pandemic. So I'm not saying it necessarily worked in Weathersfield, but it seemed an effective way to allow people to pick up takeout and then, um, you know, leave quickly without creating that congestion. Um, and just one of the other points, one of the things with our POS ordering system is that people do get a text when their food is ready, which eliminated um, the need for people to kind of parallel park and hang or double park and hang out waiting for their food to be ready. They'd be able to arrive when it was ready. And I think it was, was it a three to four minute turnaround from yeah, the, the time they got their text to when they were back out in their car. So that was our thought with the short term parking. Curbside and curbside pickup as well. If, if you were to you know, tell us that you were arriving, hey, you know, I, we ordered for curbside, I'm here, I'm at this, I'm in this space. Um, a part of our plan is to have enough staff, like staff members that, that can just walk the food right out that would eliminate anybody getting out of their car or searching for a space or, or just being in that spot. It would, you know, all the food would already be, be, be paid for and just handed off and, and uh, on the road. Okay. Um, there was uh, also a memo from Peter Gillespie to the commission dated October 13th. And at the end of that, there are eight questions and comments. Um, had you had a chance to look at that as well? October 13th? I don't, I don't believe so. I, let me give um, I can't um, think of which what? memo that was off the top of my head. Well, I think I think the, the question one was just answered in the chat, which I would thoroughly discourage, um, you know, just because some people can't see it, um, that uh, the owner of the property indicated that repavement of the, the driveway and the rear parking lot is um, being put out to bid currently. Okay. Um... Again, since we're not the owners of the property, we're definitely open to lots of ideas regarding that parking lot. And we agree, obviously, that it needs something. Um, that would have to be discussions as well with, with the owners and the committee. Okay. okay. Peter, did you have answers to any of the eight questions provided to you or would you like to pursue those now? Uh, I have not uh, received responses yet. So um, <clears throat> maybe we leave those uh, uh, open. They may be, uh, <clears throat> they may come up during the public comment or by the other commission members. We can handle those as we go. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, is there anybody on the commission that has any questions for the applicant? I, I had a uh, couple, Rich. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go. Do, you, do you guys, does the applicant also run, I think there's Lunas in Glastonbury and Simsbury. Do you operate those? No, originally my uncle owned all of the Luna pizzas. It started in uh, Hartford on Franklin Ave. And in... Um, 2008 broke up the company sold them individually and um I, I'm, I'm his nephew and i bought the one that was in uh west hartford okay and just the, in your experience in west hartford i was just wondering yeah. uh, of your 
of your sales in West Hartford, what rough percentages would you say are people eating in the restaurant versus to go food? So prior to the pandemic, it was probably 50% dining room and we were working on expanding that. So we did the renovation in 2018 um, to, to put in like a bar area and we were really working on expanding that and then the pandemic hit. Um, so right now it's about 30% dining room. We are seeing an increase there. I know the mask mandate was just lifted in West Hartford. And I do think some of those patterns will change, but right now I'm definitely was, is more takeout than it was two years ago. And, and I guess along the same lines, I was just curious of the takeout in West Hartford, how much of that is delivered by your own people versus by you know Uber Eats or the or the service? Seventy five percent of our delivery is done by our own in house people. Okay, and I, I actually what I what I meant to ask and actually um, as well is of the takeout in West Hartford, how much of it would you say? Do customers pick up themselves versus it gets delivered either by you or a service? Hmm. How would that um, that's, a, that, that's a great question. It, I'm going to say that sometimes it's weather depending. Sometimes it's um, it, being there as long as we have. There are things that go on like uh, sporting events for the kids, um, family events, uh, timing but on, on average, I would say, I don't know, like what, like more than 50, right? More than 50 is takeout for sure. Again, it used to be, I think, even higher. We didn't start doing the third party until um, the pandemic. We did have our own drivers before, but it used to be more yeah. Yeah. just takeout. Yeah. yeah, I would, yeah. Right, so I guess just the metro I followed you. So of the, of the takeout food, how much do the customers drive there and Pick it I'd up. Say right now with the pandemic, yeah. about fifty percent. I think um, that's increasing again. But I, again, I think for a while there that we were doing delivery with like um, contactless delivery. People didn't want to even see anyone, so we would right. do the phone and we drop it off. So that definitely increased our delivery business. How about how about pre-COVID? How how was that ratio? Well, probably eight seventy-five, twenty-five. Yeah, that's about people, right. Yeah, people yeah. Would yeah, the the, um, the curbside. The curbside pickup, which was the contactless pickup, we've seen that um, because parking is such an issue in West Hartford as well, um, our customers take a great advantage of that. And that works out terrifically because they can just pull up, call, we're here, okay, got you. Food comes off the oven, put it together, out the front door, and they're gone minutes. Minutes. Right. And, like, we, we, I, we absolutely love that as it, there in West Hartford because of the parking issue. And, and I guess in terms of, again, what you've experienced in West Hartford, um, what, what, what's the busiest day of the week? Is it either Friday or Saturday, probably? Um, yeah, Friday for sure right now. Friday for sure. And, and, and then Saturday. Yeah. yeah, and then Saturday the right now. The weekends would be the busiest. And on those days, Friday and Saturday, you know, is there a particular time of day when you know, your highest peak occurs? And when would that be? Five to eight, generally uh, five to seven. Five 30. to seven, five to seven, five, five to seven, five to seven thirty, five thirty to. Uh, in the summertime, it's a little bit later. The daylight is a, a little bit longer. In the wintertime, it's a little earlier. When as soon as it starts to get dark around Friday, like four thirty, four four o'clock, we start to see people, um, calling them. In in the in the back where you're proposing the cooling um, and the storage. Do those um, displace any of the parking spaces back there? Do you know? Uh, I I can't I can't speak directly, but I, I would say maybe one space because they're going to be close enough to the building that it, it's it's not uh it's not jetting at, all the way out into that parking lot. It's a ten foot from from the building's edge to the edge of the walk-in will be 14 feet. It needs to be four feet, three or four feet from the existing, um, what is that, the, the, ga the existing gas line, gas meter that's there, mm -hmm. and then 10 feet. So maybe one space would be on, on, the, on that left-hand side of the building in the back. Because I believe according to the site plan, the parking spaces are along the north and then the south side. Um, we had indicated that there were eight spaces each and we got, I think part of the memo indicated that there were actually only supposed to be six on each side. Um, 
So again, correct me if I'm wrong, if that's the case, then I don't believe it impacts the parking. Okay, all right, well, th thank you for, for answering my questions, I appreciate it. Thank you. Richard, could, could I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Pete. Yeah, so just, just a general comment. I think you guys have a pretty creative uh, business idea here and uh, want to uh, compliment you on that and working that out with um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the bar there. Uh, to me, uh, the thing that, that we really need to understand better is the whole parking issue. I think that's the crux of, of the, the issue, basically. Other than that, yeah. I mean, it's a great, great idea. Uh, so what I heard you say is, unlike I think what was written, you're not gonna be using the parking behind the bar because of the one-way drive and that would cause all sorts of problems. So, so that's, that's great. So you agree to that, right? Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned that you may have parking uh, at the fire station. Is, is that something you've talked to uh, the right people about? And how will that work? Can, can you just comment on that? Um, I, I was I thought um, I was under the impression from the multiple discussions with other uh, members that, that it was a, a public parking area. Or that there were plans to make it one, correct or no? Yeah, I'm not aware. Maybe Pete can, can uh, clarify that for us. Uh, I didn't know that, that was might be our, sure. My understanding was that the Keeney lot was a public lot that could be used and then there was a lot behind the fire station. So I could be, we could be wrong there. So, so just for the record, a, a portion of the fire headquarter parking lot is public. Uh, obviously, it's also being heavily used by the Charles restaurant uh, at the same time. Uh, there are spaces in there that are no parking and there are spaces reserved for the uh, fire department. Uh, there is a plan, uh, although that plan is uncertain to expand that um, into the adjoining properties. Uh, we do have some funding for that. Uh, when that might happen and how that might happen is still uh, up in the air, but there is some public parking in the fire department, but it, obviously it, it's a competitively used, let's say. How many spaces roughly, Pete, is that? I think that entire parking lot, now please don't quote me on that. If you uh, factor in the fire department parking as well as the public parking, there's about 35 spaces maybe. Oh, okay, that's, that's pretty substantial. Okay, good. Uh, just related to the parking question, you said that you have your own drivers, and I forget the number you quoted. I thought you said six or so. That's in West Hartford. That's in West Hartford. That's a that's the. I don't. I don't. I don't want to do that much delivery. Well, it's a, West Hartford is a much much larger population too. So, so how many drivers will you have here, uh, and where do you think they'll park if you do have them? So initially we didn't have them in our um, proposal because we were thinking about the parking situation and we were thinking it would be less, um, less of a traffic issue to have the third party drivers. Again, we're open because we understand that there's different concerns with that versus having our own that are there. Um, probably we could do it with two on a Friday night. Um, but again, that, that is something that we have to talk about because Unlike in West Hartford, where we have our own private driveway that just the drivers use, it's a different situation here. So that was why our initial gut feeling was to not use our own drivers and not have to worry about them trying to use that driveway. Okay, but if you did have drivers and you had two, that would be two cars, right? Right. Right, so each one would have a car. Yeah. So I don't know if you considered using the Keeney Center uh, I mean, one of the concerns that we read is that people are worried about these third parties you know, right. flying by, jumping out and causing traffic. I mean, it, it's possible. I mean, you can't discount that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't control all these different drivers, but if you had your own drivers, you have a lot of control. That's, that's how I feel anyways. Right. I would be more comfortable with a model where you have your own drivers and maybe they go to Keeney or something like that, or try to find a designated area where if it's only two cars, you, you, you guys have access to that. So I don't know, just, just some thoughts. Sure. I mean, we're very open again, like in West Hartford. So we have, until the pandemic, we only use our own delivery drivers for 12 years, 11 years. And they, we actually have an agreement with the building next door that's an office building. So the people, most people are gone by five o'clock. And so when our delivery drivers come to work, 
they park in the parking lot behind the office building and they're able to use that. Um, so we're definitely, I mean, we're open to lots of different scenarios for whatever would fit best. We like the accountability of having our own drivers. We yep. love the accountability of having our own staff for multiple reasons. Um, once they, rep number one, they represent, you know, what we do, who we are. Um, and it's not some, you know, kid trying to make a little extra money and zipping, like you said, zipping around town. Um, the, the accountability for our own delivery guys is, is you know, would be um, at, at the heart there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else on the commission have any questions? Uh, yes. George here. George, uh, go ahead. I'm, I'm very concerned with this parking issue because uh, the driveway, like the town engineer says, is very narrow. Uh, there is an answer to it, and it costs some money. Take down the trees along that driveway, and I still don't think it's a two-way driveway. Get it back. And then the difficulty with some people parking over in the town. We lose it, George. George. Oh. George, I think we lost you. Uh, some sense to me, but I'm afraid you're depending upon people coming to you and maybe not being getting delivered by your, you know, your drivers or uh, or you 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 could use your calling system uh, to call them in at a certain point in time. But I, I hope you don't have, and it worries me that you're gonna have people, a lot of people coming and clogging up the front and or the town parking lots, both of them, both the Keeney and maybe the town fire station. Town fire station may be closer, but it's harder to get from there to the front, unless you drive around front, park in one of the two spaces that you want the town to reserve for you. So I don't know what the answer to all this is, but I mean, when I when I comment about the tree coming down on the driveway, I kind of meant that because I am on this commission so long that I know Steve had a problem with that driveway back in the old days. And the commission, an older commission had that I was on had difficulty with that. And you really ought to widen that driveway and use the back area and Steve ought to you know, ought to, ought to be doing that. Uh, but, you know, I don't know what the answer to all is. I'm kind of rambling on it because it's a lot of uh, difficulty and it's uh, not easily answered. And uh, I hope those two spaces out front are efficiently used by you and your drivers. Okay, thank That's you. That's it, Mr. Chairman, for me at this point, I may have other issues. Okay, thanks. Anybody else on the commission have any questions for the applicant? Yeah, Rich, David Drake. Hey, Dave. Hey, uh, just to clarify, I thought you guys weren't going to use the parking lot between the old behind the old town. Is that true or? That's what we've said. Um, initially, yeah. in our first proposal, I said we were going to use it, and then as other people brought up concerns about the one way and the state of the parking lot, we decided it was probably best not to use it at all. Um, I still understand from a lot of committee members that. There are concerns about um, about the lack of parking in general, and so I, my understanding is that that's why they would like the parking lot paved so that it could be used by us and by Old Town. Um, as it stands, our proposal is not to use it at all. Okay, I, on the on the on the plot plan you show uh, and the package, you said the wall between uh, Old Town and you are com is coming down. I don't, I, Maybe I don't see it, or maybe you just don't show it on that. So it, it's is that the idea to make one big place? Yeah, not works. the entire wall, just the wall. Um, let me look at my architectural drawing. Uh, I think it's page nine on the packet. Right. It says yeah. existing space. Yeah. Uh, the the wall immediately to the right there. It, I don't know. It might be like might be six feet, five or six feet. 
Uh, okay, I see. Okay, very good. So, so it's not you're not going. It's still two separate things, though, pretty much. It's yes, but you could you could get to the old town from us, or you could get to us from the old town. And right okay. now, there's the small little kitchen door to go between the two, yeah. so to make ease of of service better. That's why we had that in our plan. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, very good. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, Pete, else yeah, one more thing, Pete. Other than the parking okay. situation, is there any? Anything there that says we shouldn't be doing this in terms of town rules? Um, no, the use is the use is permitted. Um, I think, yeah, it is. It is ultimately the parking. I mean, right. um, it, you know, they're located right on the bend on Main Street, so it's not yeah. an ideal situation. And you got the driveway that's one way, so clearly not a an ideal situation. If if this is going to be a very successful spot, so um, in which we hope. It certainly will be, and the business will flourish there. So we have, uh, as you saw from the town engineer, he has those concerns as well. Just so you know, there's also been some discussion because the parking lot is getting a lot of, the Keeney parking lot is getting a lot of use. We are discussing whether we need a crosswalk uh, for folks who come out of the Keeney parking lot to cross the street right there. So that would also further complicate things. We would lose a couple of parking spaces as well. So there's some other conversations going on <clears throat> at the same time as this uh, business is being proposed. I, I, I'm, I'm not down at Old Weathersfield that much, but on a typical night, is the Keeney parking lot even remotely filled? I mean, if times I go down there and park there, I've never really seen it filled. That's why. Uh -huh. well, is it yeah. ever full? Oh, yeah. It, it's. Um, yeah. I mean, with, unless there's an event. I'm just saying a standard night would it um, be really looking for Definitely on the weekends, and I've been yeah. there on, on a Thursday night where there was only two or three spots available, and there really wasn't okay. much going on. So it's um, things have changed over the last two years dramatically from the, when we did the parking study originally. So, um, yes. I, I don't um, know. I, Is yeah, it okay I, to I, speak, or uh, should we? There, there are many nights, especially as you say, on weekends when the Kini is completely full. <laughs> there are people are going down to um, park in the Congregational Church lot. They're going to park in the Trinity Church lot. Um, it's, it's. Uh, we, we're, we are facing a parking issue with all the additional events and uh, um, businesses. Okay. There is one thing um, I'd like to add about. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe you maybe you missed the beginning when I when I said that we would talk with the commission members and the applicant and then open it up to the public, and we haven't haven't quite gotten to that point yet. There's one one thing I'd like to add. Uh, Volume for us, there is going to there there is now at, in West Orford a, a spot where I can't take any more orders, and I have a big staff there. At this place, I plan on having a smaller staff. I like the smaller community. I like it to be um, more family oriented. Uh, the volume will at some point. It doesn't matter whether it's huge or 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 like nothing at some point we can't make any more food properly and we simply tell people i'm sorry but we're not taking any any more orders right now and th that may help with some of your concerns with the parking for like the takeout or even people coming in if, if we're drawing so many people to the old town because of you know to sit down there maybe they're already attracted to weathersfield but at some point, like the, the volume, I can't fit any more pizzas in an oven at a time than, than it dictates. And like we mentioned earlier, ha removing one of the ovens is probably a, a better idea of spatial wise for, for the staff that's going to be the, in there anyway. And it's, I, I just wanted to, to throw that out there. So, you know, it's not like- In case excessive volume. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not like we're a pizza factory. This is a handmade product. This has been a handmade product for almost 35 years now. It takes time. It takes dedication. It's not like we just slap something together and then it goes. It's it's a talent. It's a it's, it's a learned talent. Okay, thanks very much. Um, anyone else on the commission have any questions for the applicant before we open it up to the public? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. I uh, Tom Dean here. Okay. 
Um, it seems like the uh, proposal uh, stands uh, or is dependent to a great extent upon the relationship with the Old Town Cafe. I wonder if the applicants could go into that relationship a bit more and also whether or not there is a written agreement between uh, their organization and the Old Town uh, Cafe people? Uh, sure. Um, um, I was introduced to Andy by a mutual friend and um, Andy is in the uh, bar business and doesn't want to be in the food business and I'm in the food business. And I don't want to be in the bar business. And when I saw that space, I thought that there could be a great relationship of providing food for his bar, as well as um, having um, a, a space in Old, old Weathersfield, a, a town that's just um, a, just the right size for us. Um, in our written agreement with, um, with the Old Town, um, I'm gonna be providing food for him till 11 p.m. But it, we are only, a, as Luna Pizza doing business, going to be open till nine and then 10 o'clock. So the only uh, uh, food we, that we would be selling would be to patrons already there at the bar. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, just uh, one bit of explanation. Uh, so the food that you would be supplying to Old Town Cafe would be your, your standard uh, uh, pizza and Italian comfort food yeah. items? Yeah, um, bar food, Italian comfort food, uh, things that, um, that go well along with, with, with what um, you have there. We probably do more wings and things like that at the bar, but we do serve that as part of our regular menu as well. I see. Okay, so in essence, one could order a uh, uh, one of your pizzas through being a customer of Old Town Cafe and eating it, uh, eating it on the premises there at Old Town. Correct? Correct. Yes, we kind of are seen it as our dining room, basically. I know when we spoke with Andy, that was one of the things. Again, during the pandemic, when things changed and when more food had to be served. That was part of his interest in um, drawing more customers and keeping them as well and kind of changing some of the vibe, especially with the patio, making it more um, family friendly and maybe busier earlier in the day as well. So less of like a late night bar crowd and more of people coming in earlier, like we spoke, I think five to seven, sitting down, ordering food, having service from our restaurant, and then um, also being able to order beer and wine, whatever at the bar. And uh, correct me if I'm incorrect, but I think I heard you mention that you do have a written agreement or a proposed written agreement uh, with the uh, Old Town Cafe. Yes, that we serve food till 11 p.m. Within the sublease, um, because again, Steve Kelly is the current um, owner and then Andy leases um, the Old Town Cafe from him. So then within our sublease with Andy um, and signed off on by Steve, is that we're serving food to them. Okay. Uh, have you provided a copy of that to the uh, town planner's office? Uh, or or yes. willing to so? Yes. Yes. I think that'd be helpful for the record. Yeah. I believe it's included. Um, I'll, do I'll double check. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So. It, just, just to clarify, it is included in the initial um, application within the commercial sublease agreement. Um, on page six of that, I believe, it starts with um, the agreement between ourselves and Old Town Cafe. Uh, certainly. Hey, Richard, just one, one follow up question yep. that came to mind, uh, if I may, please. Sure. Yep, thanks. Uh, good question on. Uh, do you have a written agreement? And uh, it sounds like you do. The question I have is, is that for the duration of the lease? Meaning that for, for the time that you will lease this place, you have this agreement, right? He can't revoke it like a year from now and say, no. I, don't you my, I don't want you in my place. And then you guys are kind of stuck. That, that's no. what the question is. So we signed a three-year sublease because um, that's what we signed. So for the duration of that three-year lease, and then obviously we would prefer to then sign an extension. Usually what we do um, with our other businesses, like a 10 and two fives or something like that. Um, but for the duration of the three-year lease, 
uh, that's the agreement. The space that we're leasing includes the kitchen that is already uh, that is already there. The 181, 183. It includes that that uh, the kitchen there. So it, we we're there we're there for three years at at the bare minimum, hopefully providing longer. yeah, ho yeah, hopefully way longer, providing food for for Old Town. Okay. Anyone else on the committee yeah, Rich, have any Rich, questions? Rich, David Drake, just, Dave. just another quick one. Sure. Uh, we have signs up to say no kids going in through that lobby to the right, or how do you deal with that? I'm sorry, no no kids? I mean, what if someone picks up a pizza? Oh, can they go into Old Town with, it, with a couple of kids and eat it? Or I, I don't think you can do that, right? Or can you? I don't know. Uh, that I that I I think that be if it's a if it's a bar serving food I mean Lucky's has kids going in there they got a bar yeah I don't see a reason why you can't have you I can't mean, do even though it's just a bar you can't okay I wasn't sure well it's it's, it's just a bar now but not in the future <laughs> like, oh. and that's part of why we're adding more tables and making it um that's you know. We're not picturing kids at like midnight drinking at the bar. No, I, I don't. I don't <laughs> picture that either. But I'm just thinking, you know, Saturday afternoon guy, you know. So, but okay, no, I, I'm just trying to picture that. I don't have a real problem with it, to be honest with you. But just uh, okay. Thank you. The uh, the uh, the for the three years after three years, Andy becomes the uh, the owner of the the bar and the property, and let him and I have been speaking at length about continuing this relationship, hopefully continuing this, continuing this relationship. Okay, thanks. Um, All right. A couple of quick questions. Tony. Can you tell us about the kitchen renovation or the work you'll be doing? According to your sketch, I think you have about 900 square feet. You'll be bringing in ovens, you'll be renovating, renovating. maybe what type of capital items you'll be spending on it? So um, right now there, the plan is to have uh, uh, two pizza ovens, but I think we're gonna we're gonna scale that down to one. Um, there'll be a pizza state, a pizza cooler, pizza station, a couple of work tables, and a dough machine. And then in the existing kitchen, um, there's a stove that was broken. Um, replacing that stove and adding a fryer in under the hood that is already there, um, as well as the tables and chairs and and things that need to be to, to um, add it there. Counter, POS system, um, that, that's about it for equipment. And the walk-in cooler. Walk-in cooler. Peter, um, I think there's only two or three available spots out in front of that building anyway. Would that be dedicated exclusively towards the takeout? So that is a, that is a subject that's being discussed with the uh, town's legal traffic authority, which is the town manager um, in consult with the police department and the town engineer. So uh, they are pursuing that and getting uh, potentially a couple of spots out front for short, short term, you know, pick up, drop off that kind of a thing. So that's, um, that's a decision that rests with the, with the town manager's office. I'm, I'm in that area quite often and seeing cars even double park lately. But should be a concern, as we've all we've all talked about. Um, how old, Peter? When did we start the old Weathersfield parking study? Is that two or three years out now? So the the study was completed two two years ago. We started you know analyzing it about a year before that. So just to put that in time frames perspective. So I I I have said already before that all of those numbers and assumptions are kind of out the window now. Um, I would hope I would hope because the landlord has a tendency or probably is an exciting opportunity here to double his uh, gross income. He might be uh, might be worthy to have some of our landlords as well as the tenants come to our meetings to explain, you know, what their objectives are and in, in cooperating, maybe expediting the old Weathersfield parking study and getting on board with excitement. So just uh, you know, this is a, a positive cash flow for, for uh, the old town as well as the neighborhood. So I'm very concerned and try to expedite the, uh, the parking study sooner than later. Richard, one, one question yeah. for Peter, just, just a comment he made, I want a clarification. Sure. Uh, Peter, you mentioned that the town's looking at those two parking spaces. 
to see if that's going to be allowed. Uh, how certain is that? I mean, th this whole proposal kind of hinges on that in my mind. Uh, is it is it iffy or, or is it a done deal? We have done it. Do we did do it uh, during COVID for uh, La Noche's restaurant. We did one uh, in front of Aroma Bistro. We did one in front of the Charles and we did one in front of Grange Fresh. I think it's it's the reality of the times that we live in with people being hesitant to go into restaurants and, and sitting down. And I think that's gonna to continue to be with us um, for, for a period of time. I can't speak for the town manager or the police department or the town engineer, but I would think they would look uh, you know, favorably upon you know, creating some sort of accommodation. Uh, although um, once again, it's their decision to make. And we're also looking at other, as I said earlier, a, a crosswalk maybe. To, to make sure, you know, th that is a, that's a tough spot of all the spots on, on Main Street with the bend in the road, uh, the sight line challenges, you know, it's probably the most challenging spot to do something like this, but nevertheless, it, it is being looked at and, you know, will be properly evaluated. Should, should we do a traffic study? Uh I don't know if it I don't know if it warrants a traffic study, but it's certainly being looked at by the police, the town engineer, and the and the town manager. Um, I don't know what the timing of that decision will be. Um, so, okay. Rich George here. I'd like to ask a question. Okay, uh, on the same lines. Uh, the driveway, which has been brought up in this application, and now we hear that they are not gonna have any clients utilize the rear lot. But again, they have two uh, areas where they store things and there might be a truck or two small ones, uh, small vehicles, even cars go back there to unload. I don't know. I haven't heard from the applicants how we're gonna deal with that because I believe that that driveway needs to be widened, but uh, at least it needs to be paved. And I'm not gonna say the back parking lot needs to be paved, it probably should be, but at least that driveway should be. So in order for me to make a decision on this application, uh, I'd like to know how, how the applicant wants to deal with that and how Peter feels about it. I'm done. Who wants okay. to talk first? The deliveries for dropping off any of the, the product, I've, as I've seen, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know if a, like the size of the trucks for the vendors vary from vans to large 18 wheelers. And I can't speak to which ones would be showing up. Obviously the bigger the truck, the less likely it is to go into the, uh, into the, the back. If it's going to park in the front, and go through the front door um, we have access to the kitchen and um, sometimes even I've seen in um, West Hartford my experience the bigger the truck sometimes they have to come through the front door just to unload the stuff and the, the guys have no problem getting it to the back of the restaurant um, for the driveway being repaved again um, we are subleasing the space uh, we are and we would love to be able to um, have that that taken care of but I we don't own the property and it would be um, beneficial for all parties if it were um, repaved and taken care of. And I believe Andy has mentioned to me that he's looking for someone to take care of that. Uh, and paving, we know, is, is based on, you know, can be based on oil prices. Gas goes up, oil goes up. But and, we're very supportive of and, that. Uh, yeah, and, and we, and you know, we're, we're um, open, open to, that, to that happening and um, believe Andy what he, when, he, when he says that he's looking to take care of that immediately. Peter? Uh, George, yes, I did, I think, uh, mention that in my memo. So it is something both the town engineer and I uh, feel strongly about, particularly the curb cut. It has um, potholes and is in a real state of disrepair, uh, as well as a portion of the driveway. So, um, yes, it's a, it's a maintenance thing that needs to be done. Yeah. I'm not going to suggest that big tree be taken down in that driveway, but that would certainly widen. But nevertheless, uh, that's, that's another issue some other time, but uh, the pavement, yeah, it should be done. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, I guess the the only question I have right now for Peter or or the applicant or or the owner is uh, how many we're talking about reserving potentially two of the spots out on the front. How many spots are there? I think six or seven, somewhere in that range. There's a there's a bus um, a bus stop a little further up in front of the fire headquarters. So uh, if you take that out of the equation, there's probably three or four spots. Um, I guess you would say south of the driveway, and then there's probably three or four spots north of the driveway. Um, so once again, depending upon, you know, what you're defining as the area, uh, that's probably the total okay. space is there. Yep. I guess for whatever reason, I've never noticed the bus stop. Yeah. I, I didn't notice it myself until the other day when I was out there with the town engineer. So. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I have a question for the applicant. Yeah, Jim, go ahead. I may have missed this. Do you, Will you have any delivery vehicles or any company vehicles that are there on site all the time? Like, let's say, sleep there overnight? No. no. Okay. So we and, are, it's just myself and my husband that um, run, run and own and operate the business in West Hartford. And it would be the same thing. Um, so he's, he's certainly not saying there. Oh, no, there's no, there'll be no, no overnight. No planned overnight parking. Someone's car breaks, or but I, I no. There's it's no no. Okay, parking. not a problem. Yep. So your drivers are independent. I'm just gonna talk this around for a second. So would you? I'm not too hung up. Uh, I agree with George. Cleaning up that right of way, the big tree. If that has to be addressed, it has to be addressed. Uh, would would it be a big hurdle for you to operate? your delivery drivers from the rear if there was a dedicated spot in your parking lot in the rear for them no it wouldn't be a big hurdle but again the hurdle would be the one-way driveway and the concerns about about that well i realize in uh in the driveway it's the length of the building is the pinch point in the corner so it's i would think it would be low speed would you not agree that driveway yeah. is super low speed yeah, and um, I even the last time that I was there, I thought um, that um, mirror, like mirrors, like angled mirrors, where the, wherever they were placed, so um, anyone coming in could see if anyone was coming out, and anyone exiting could possibly see if anyone was coming in in that space um, ahead of time. You know, something at the end of the driveway or something on either side. Um, it was just a, a an afterthought of like, oh, that that might work. Got it. Uh, and as far as your deliveries go, you would time those de deliveries. Your schedules could be worked out. So let's say they're at off-peak times, I'm sure. Oh, so yeah. can take – I don't no, see any delivery yeah. trucks going in the back there. I don't believe they go there today. No, 100%. No, they, they usually come before business hours. Um, so it wouldn't be – it would like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. It wouldn't be when customers or old town patrons were coming or going. This is a little bit off. Uh, historic. Would you be uh, willing to police, like, let's say the fire station, that parking lot in there? So, in case anyone just happens to have their pizza and leave some trash in that in the adjoining is happens every now and then. is that a problem with you guys to kind of keep an eye on that area? I think just being a general good neighbor, if I saw any trash from any of our boxes, no matter where it was in town, I would pick it up or I would have, you know, my staff would be inclined to pick it up. It's um, that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be an issue. It didn't, doesn't matter where, where it would be, if it was in the firehouse or if it was across the street. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jim. All right. Anyone else from the commission before we open it up to the public? Um, Artie has had his hand up for quite some time. I think you go star six, you can unmute yourself. All right. Try uh, Andy Sanzaro. Yes, thank you guys. Yep. Um, I appreciate the dialogue. It's it's great. Um, 
first things first, if you can get the Colonial Dames to sell us 10 feet to the right of the, uh, the driveway, it'd be great. We could take all those trees down and pave it, and it would give us a great entryway into the proposed parking lot. Um, and I have no problem taking the trees down. I think it would be great. Again, our property line ends at the driveway, though. So, you know, I, I mean, taking the trees down is not a big issue, but I can't just say, oh, let's take the trees down and expand the driveway. It's not my property. It's not the old town property. So if you guys have any inclination or expertise or wherewithal to expedite such a transaction, I think it would be great for everybody in town. Um, I am, I, I sent a couple notes for clarification that uh, I, I've been in contact. The guy who did the uh, parking lot up by where the flower box is, did a real good job. He's not a town guy, so I'm going uh, also getting a bid from Antonio's Paving to do the apron and the driveway over. Um, just to, for edification, uh, I don't really have anything else to say except the people that are proposing this are quality people. It's a long-term type thing. And I think you can see that, that they're real and honest about uh, doing the right thing. And I just think it's it's a good deal for everybody in, in the old weathers field as I see it. All right. I thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Bet. Um, give Artie one more shot. All right. If not, uh, Paul Brady. Uh, thank you. Good night to everyone. Um, uh, first of all, uh, thank the commission for the dialogue. Uh, my first question is, um, very concerned with the traffic, just like anyone else that lives in old Weathersfield, but, um, as it relates to that particular area, there's a fire station there. And at any given moment, it could be an emergency. I don't know how many of you guys have been down here during the period of when the carnival was here and the, uh, the scarecrows being out. And there's a lot of folks down here. During this, uh, it gets very busy down here during the summer months, which is also peak business, uh, peak business season for the businesses down here. And we have a city bus that travels along that roadway. Now, hypothetically, as it's already congested as it is, and the fire truck needs to get out because of an emergency, and there's a delivery truck on that narrow road. Um, and I've seen the delivery trucks that come to Village Pizza. There's, there's, they're not vans. I'll tell you that. Okay, they're eighteen wheelers. Um, they can't even get in the parking lot. They stop on the road. So there's a huge concern with parking. Um, and it seems like uh, there is constantly businesses being pushed into this small, dense area, densely populated area. And it's created more and more problem for residents because parking is a huge issue here. And that has not been addressed, has never been addressed. And we've had parking studies over and over again. and there is nothing happening with the parking. So my whole, my questions are, what are we going to do to ensure that the uh, safety of residents and their quality of life is protected, number one? And um, number two, the, fire, uh, the firefighters that protect this town need to be able to get in and out of the parking lot safely. I don't think it's a safe or wise decision to mix th their parking space with, with commuters. That creates a dangerous situation. So um, what is going to be done about that in order to protect the residents that live here? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is Rob O'Connor. Good evening, <laughs> commissioners. Um, I, I, I kind of ask just a question. First of all, if we sent a written letter and whether the commission has read that or makes any sense to um, reiterate points in a letter. Um, I, I think 
you probably might as well, if you can yeah, I'm not gonna read summarize the letter or hit the high points. Yeah. Yeah, I would um, suggest we're not going to read them aloud. No, absolutely. That's why. That's why I didn't know. Like we were at a town council meeting last night where they read forty-five letters out loud. So no, uh, no. Anyway, I, I'm, I can I'm, assure I'm, you that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm a village business district resident at 180 Main Street. Uh, I live right across the street from the firehouse and Kitty Corner to um, the Old Town Building, and. Um, I, I, as I hear people on planning and zoning say, I haven't been out the whole way this field. I, I, I want to just say out loud, I, you know, I live here and I see this probably better than everybody on this, on this call, 24 hours a day. I have cameras aimed at that location for people who want to talk about that, the, the, the driveway, it's not a slow speed driveway. People go in and out of that thing, full speed beeping, and it's kind of like, it's like the entry to a nuisance, but um, I don't think widening that thing or taking trees down is gonna, is gonna really help at all either. So, and I, um, previous caller mentioned the safety issue and everybody has spoken about the parking. It's not the parking, it's not parked cars, it's moving vehicles that are the danger. Not, you know, the, the parking is a nuisance thing for people to park, but people like the applicants mentioned, it's a walking and biking, it's a tourist location and everything about this application, the, the results of it are potential problems with people getting hit, people getting sideswiped. I, I watch people and I'll show, I could show the, the commission camera footage of people getting near misses in that driveway every day. And he also brought up the fire safety. And that's another thing that wasn't mentioned by the applicants. The fire trucks come out of there full speed and I don't know how many, 20,000 20, pounds, whatever those trucks are, they're, they're gonna be facing the, uh, the Uber Eats, DoorDash army. And those two spots are, are not gonna do it. And honestly, as a citizen and a taxpayer with Old Weathersfield and Weathersfield, I, don't, I think that those spots are town spots. Those should not be given away to businesses. Those, bus those businesses, they should have a plan that fits the area, not start pushing out residents and people who are coming down here to enjoy the place to park. I know that we, I know that's been done for the pandemic, there's been concessions. The patio food service for the old town on that patio is a, is a pandemic concession that I'm assuming will be over soon. The old town, and correct me if I'm wrong, does not have a liquor license to serve alcohol outside. That will have to be looked at. And the applicants are talking about the fa a family atmosphere inside of the bar. And this is nothing against the bar, but it's a town, you know, it's like, it's a town drinking bar. And to bring, to, to be advertising this as a family, a family show, it's just not, it's a disingenuous, I call in my letter a half-baked recipe for disaster. I believe that this is a, I know you, the pizza is good, but this recipe for this application is not good. And I really would, I would really encourage you strongly to reject the plan, request, you know, re reject this or deny the special permit, go back to the drawing board. They, they, they scale down and change the plan six or seven times within the last week. I mean, I, I went to the historical district commission meeting on, online, heard them talk about the coolers, they're inside, they're outside. There's four ovens, there's three ovens. The time's gonna go to 11, it's gonna go to 10. You just heard tonight, it was supposed to be 10 o'clock, then it's gonna be 11 o'clock. Nobody's addressed the, the other issue, which is light pollution and noise pollution in that area. New lights on the building. I really think you should reject any idea of people stringing lights around a public tree to, to, to do some atmospheric um, improvement. I don't need those lights. And I don't think people in the fire trucks don't need those lights interfering with their sight line on around, like as Peter mentioned, around a dangerous curve. I mean, there are so many things that are problematic with this. And I know you guys can only ask so many questions, but there are, there are things, if, if they're gonna be parking cars and carrying the pizza out in a high pedestrian traffic sidewalk, it's basically gonna be like, they're gonna be running the gauntlet of people who wanna walk on here to dodge pizza people delivering. It's gonna be like a Sonic without the roller skates, bringing pizzas out to cars waiting in two spots in front of my house closing their doors and banging their doors and, and interfering with traffic. 
I can show you video that the traffic nightmare is not the parking, it's the actual movement of high speed vehicles that go 30 miles an hour or more where kids and parents and grandparents are walking strollers looking at museums. It's, it's a, it's, I know the applicants have talked about bringing West Hartford to, to Old Weathersfield. Old Weathersfield does not need the West Hartford vibe. It's, it's a different, it's its own unique vibe. The Planning and Zoning Commission has a chance to actually hammer down what is the vibe you want. It's not to figure out how many cars you can park into the, into the, into the central village business district. I think there are other things that you can do. There are other places for this restaurant to go. The Silestein Highway could be, they could be going on to go find an empty spot to actually create a tax um, income for the town. This is just, the tax is already paying this building. They're gonna pay their $1,600 a month lease. And the town is making all these concessions without any tax, additional tax revenue. You're not getting sales tax on a pizza in the town. The, the, there's no, there's no, um, ticket fee, when a, if, a, if a cop wants a ticket, a car in one of these spots, there's no tickets for speeding in Old Westfield. I think everybody knows that. That's like kind of an unwritten law. And those trucks, those delivery trucks, again, the Old Town delivery trucks, probably one out of 10 parks on the, on the correct side of the road in front of that building. The other ones park illegally in front of the um, bed and breakfast. They park in front of my house. My wife went out and you know, we'll ask them, hey, you, you guys want to watch out. If a fire truck swings out of here, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a disaster. Every single scenario with, a, with extra parking spaces in front of that building that are dedicated for, it's a de two dedicated spots for people that are just gonna be transient drivers. Um, and also I'd like to mention that ADA compliance is never mentioned in these things. I don't know. I don't know how the planning and zoning commissioners don't ask what is your what is your plan to bring handicapped people into this sit down facility. The bar I don't think is ever challenged for their handicap access. <clears throat> That's that that parking lot behind the thing that you guys keep on talking about. It's not even striped for cars. It has no handicap spot. There's no handicap spot. In front of that, you know, one of those spots should be handicapped, not not a, a DoorDash spot. <clears throat> like this plan is just not sound, and I think a pizza is good. I hear it's good. I think I think the fact that you guys, as a couple, are, are you know, are having a restaurant and making a living and 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 are enthusiastic about it, it's good. Just not the right spot. It's not. It's no slight against you for for kind of like getting into the wrong place, but this is the time to not do it, in my opinion. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll give Artie one more chance. Hello? All right, guess not. Uh, Deborah Cohen? Thank you very much. Um, I would like to open by saying that my comments um, are not directed specifically at the current applicants, but I do have a concern about, um, excuse me, about the addition of another pizza restaurant in this particular area. And I wonder, I don't know the number, and I'm wondering if someone on this commission can tell me how many pizza restaurants already exist within this general area and how many we think this area of Wethersfield can actually support successfully. Um, I understand there may be another pizza restaurant going into the Borden. I understand there might be a pizza restaurant going into the old auction house, although I also understand that nothing is set in stone there. Um, I guess my biggest worry is that bringing new businesses in should not put old businesses at peril. And I'm really concerned that if we are overburdened with yet another kind of business that we already have several of, someone somewhere along the line is going to suffer. Some business person is going to suffer. And um, I'd really like your feedback on that if anyone can speak to it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that has any questions or comments on this application? 
Uh, this is Paul Cerbanowitz. Okay. Um, we own the property that is pretty much directly across from the firehouse um, where they come out of the driveway. Uh, it is currently a residential property and with, we would like to um, see something done to help with the parking. So both from a delivery vehicles coming in, we do not, our tenants do not want to have uh, additional 18 wheelers coming down the uh, street to make, stop and make deliveries. They certainly can't park in a designated parking spot. So they would be taking up actual spot on the road or trying to park in front of our place, which is illegal from any parking supposedly for the fire department. And that would create a big safety risk for uh, the fire trucks trying to come out. My name is Heidi Heller and I'm co-owner of the same property, 172, 176 Main Street. My concern is the quality of life for our tenants. Our tenants are already experiencing the increase in popularity and old weather seals, the noise that goes along with that, the bar activity, particularly in the summertime when people are outside and they've had too much to drink and they're out there and they're revving their engines and they're going down the street on motorcycles to, to have on top of that, this delivery service, which as I understand averages according to the information in this application, um, one takeout for less than 10 minutes is way too much activity to be adding. And I understand you're saying this is a smaller location, so it's not gonna be that much. And maybe there's just gonna be one pizza oven, but the application is for two. And you mentioned 11 p.m., which means people are gonna be there until midnight. And my concern is the quality of life for the tenants. Car doors are gonna get slammed. People are gonna be stopping in to pick up pizzas every 10 minutes. Be besides the parking issue, there is the traffic issue, as Rob mentioned, and the delivery trucks early in the morning, they're gonna be slamming the doors. We have 18 wheelers on Main Street. We're gonna have delivery people turning around in our driveway. And I know that there are gonna be people parked out in front of our house, which is a no, no parking zone. We're gonna have people there. They're gonna block the fire trucks. If the fire trucks need to come out, how are they gonna find the drivers? There's currently no traffic police making sure that nobody parks there. We're the ones that have to police it and that it's just not effective. My concern is having another pizza place. We don't need one. We don't need the increased traffic. This is essentially an expansion of the bar. We already had enough bars. We've already had enough pizza. We don't need the additional traffic. Okay, thank you. Um, Karen Parker. The question, the first biggest question Question, of course, is the staff parking, because now you have staff parking for Old Town, staff parking for Luna Pizza, staff parking for the Charles, staff parking for Lucky Lou's, staff parking for Village. That takes up a majority of the spots. And we live in town. We live on Center Street. We see the people parking everywhere and walking who work in the restaurants. I agree with Mr. O'Connor and the woman who just spoke. We can speak from experience that the Cisco truck pulls down a side street and blocks the entire road. So now Main Street's a commercial district, but they are going to be blocking a road during the time where I leave for work and other people leave for work. I have a hard enough time some mornings getting out onto Main Street from Center Street. Um, the traffic is horrific. I agree with everyone who has spoken. And we just keep glossing over the the businesses sound fantastic, but not one person on planning and zoning has answered the question of what is the plan for the parking before letting all of these lovely people pay money for applications that the town is taking. I get the tax revenue, but I don't believe my mill weight went down based on all these new businesses. So I just truly believe that the traffic and the parking needs to be the first thing before the brewery puts in their paperwork and the Charles wants to expand and, and who else wants to do what? There's no place left for people to visit in Old Weathersfield and park their cars safely. Thank you. Thank you. 
there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak on this application? No, I'm Cavoli. Can you hear me, Peter? Hello? I can hear you. Yep. Okay, this is uh, Norm Cavoli also from Center Street. Uh, I did a couple little uh, parking surveys myself, so let like let the commission know what I found. Uh, for a while, when people were parking on Center Street to go to the Charles restaurant, there was always a few spots available behind the firehouse. Now there's no parking on Center Street, so behind the firehouse, those public spots get filled up almost every day at noon time and dinner time. And many times they'll park illegally. I think that's a major concern no one mentioned. One night during a big function, there was 10, 12 cars parked illegally behind a firehouse in unlined spots and in the spots reserved for the firemen. A cop came and ticketed them all. I've seen cars parked right in front of the town or state no parking from here to corner, and there's a cars parked there many times, okay? Uh, far as the Keeney Street lot goes, I've also checked that out on every day for uh, numerous times. Right now, most of the time, there's spots available in the Keeney Street. Not during the weekends with the Scarecrow Festival, not for the Shakespeare thing they had in front of Keeney, but in general, there's spots available in Keeney, a few, usually 10 to 20. But will people want to park behind Keeney and for a takeout restaurant? Probably not, okay? Uh, I've also noticed that at Village Pizza, at Friday night, Saturday night, there's five, 10, 15 people in line for takeout. I would expect the same thing at Luna, one or two spots, I think Rob mentioned, are not gonna do it. They will park illegally in the firehouse more than likely, okay? Uh, and they're gonna be coming in and out and double park. When I go to Village Pizza to pick up a pizza, I'm a block away, I'll take my wife so I can double park, she can run out and get it, okay? And there's like 20, 30 spots within the 50 feet of Village Pizza. So again, I think the parking will handle itself. Uh, people will park illegally. They may get tickets, they may not. Uh, they will certainly park illegally on Main Street for a few minutes to run in. I would, to run in and run out. I would not go way behind Keeney, 100 yards away to pick up pizza. The idea is to get your pizza home while it's still hot. The extra walk, in the case the guy is gonna drive faster. I'm usually in favor of anything in a development in all weathers field. Uh, but again, I agree with the other people. This is a takeout restaurant. Doesn't really add anything to the town. It's not a destination. I'm gonna go to all weathers field for the atmosphere and grab a takeout pizza. No, I'm gonna take it out and get the heck out and eat it. Uh, and I think somebody mentioned the old town is probably not conducive for a family to come in and have a pizza. Okay, uh, so therefore, uh, let the commission decide, but before a formal parking study is accomplished right now, only good news is if the Charles removes the tent from their parking lot, they're gonna add another 10, 12, 13 spots. So people who park behind the firehouse won't park on Center Street, but they'll park on the uh, parking lot, the Charles, that will help some. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that wants to come in on this application? Artie still there? Hello? Hello? Hi, uh, this is Joe Urchwoli. Uh, Hi, Joe. Okay. Good to see you. <laughs> I think he's gone. Did he bounce out? Manager. There you go. Oh, he's just lagging. 
Yeah, we're just having trouble hearing you. Joe, maybe turn off the video that's coming in if you have the ability to do that option. Just you're lagging a little bit. Oh, progress or mention of any parking plans in the hopper or on paper or in anybody's head. This new Luna Pizza place is not the right business. It's not the right time. It's not the right location. If these people are in good conscience want to serve the greater community of Wethersfield, there are so many open spots on the Silas Dean Highway, less than a mile, less than a mile away from their proposed spot that would not have any influence on parking, traffic, or safety on Old Weathersfield Main Street, especially in front of the Old Town Bar. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that wants to speak on this application? I guess at this point, I'll mention that there was some additional correspondence received. Um, there was uh, an email earlier today from Helen O'Reilly, one Avalon place, uh, opposing the uh, takeout business. Um, she works part time at Web Dean Stevens, says there are already traffic jams. Um, that this doesn't support the goals of development for Old Weathersfield concern about immediate access for fire trucks and plenty of other locations in Weathersfield for this business. Um, Tom Carson, 12 Avalon Place, um, is a fan of Luna Pizza, but finds this uh, application to be of little benefit to Main Street, uh, has concerns about the delivery drivers, uh, the traffic being caused by it. Um, indicated that he had concerns about the relationship between Old Town and, and Luna. And um, that's about that. Carol Szymanski of 18 Megat Park, posing it, um, drive through pickup delivery only pizza is not an appropriate uh, business for uh, Main Street and Old Weathersfield, not enough sidewalk space for outdoor dining. Expectation of traffic and parking issues. Uh, outdoor walk-in walk -in cooler, not a common uh, item for restaurants in the Old Weathersfield. And this is more appropriate for the Silas Dean. So that was, that was the rest of the correspondence on that. Um, anybody else in the public that wants to comment on this application? Yeah, so this is uh, Joseph Ertuoli again from Center Street. Yep. I would like to address the fact that uh, nobody has mentioned either from the committee or from the public regarding uh, the desires and uh, comments that were given by the Historical Commission for Old Weathersfield. Could you address that, please? Thank you. Well, we don't, we don't have them, so I don't know what that was in reference to. Do you know, Peter? He might not be there. Uh, there was, they sure. did. I'll let the maybe let the applicants uh, handle that. They did go to the uh, historic district commission uh, last week for some of the uh, exterior improvements, um, signage and lighting and uh, things like that. So I'll let the uh, I, we did not get or at least I did not see that correspondence. I'll let the applicants handle that. Okay. Um, so yes, last week we went um, 
before the Historic Commission and they approved us contingent upon, um, like I mentioned earlier, an eight foot fence surrounding the walk-in cooler and the um, 10 by 10 storage shed. And they approved the changing of the light fixtures in the front and just the repainting of the um, line and replacing the current wooden letters that say Old Town Restaurant with wooden letters that say uh, Luna Pizza. Okay, thank you. Peter, can I comment also? Who's Peter? This? This is Norm Cavoli again from Center Street. Yep. Yeah, I was at that meeting and the applicants are right. It was approved for the physical structure of the building. Uh, they made it very clear when residents called in, they had nothing to want to no comments about safety, about parking, the kind of business, the competition, only the physical outlook of the structure. And that's what they talked about. And that's what they approved. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and, and that is the jurisdiction of the Historic District Commission, so right. that was appropriate. Um, Andy Sanzero's got his hand raised again. Guys, just for a little clarification to the woman who said something about the uh, walk-in cooler, you approved one behind Lucky Lou's, which is actually visible from Church Street. So just as uh, edification, again, the, the cooler that Alex and <coughs> Steph are proposing is in the corner of the building that's blocked out by the firehouse. And as I was out there today, I tried to look and see, and I can't even see Norm's house or anybody on Center Street who would be seeing that, just to let everybody know that, uh, you know, sometimes, words can be misleading and uh, again that i know he's that they're going for a to go permit type thing it's not a drive through restaurant it's the same thing that happens at the charles at the grange i know the people on center street don't like what happens with all the parking from those places i'm i'm assuming when the covid relief comes through that the charles is going to take their tent out and there's going to be parking spaces there um, you know, there, there's concern for, for everybody. You can't, you can do whatever you want. I, I don't mean to say you can't, but you have to take into account that this is a business. They're not, they're not looking to have 45 cars driving in out of the place. Um, and for those who haven't been in the old town, it, we've had quite a few families over the years in their dining because the, the state law actually reads where, if you wanted to, you could buy your eight-year-old kid a, a drink. That's not how we <clears throat> we serve. We do not uh, apply that in any way. But just for the record, it, if you haven't been in there, it's tough to to make these uh, condescending type remarks about the type of place it is. And they are going to do a large percentage of their business either outside dining or in the dining area, just like the village does. I mean, do, do people go up in arms when the people are driving in to the village in that corner of Church Street is a, a mess. It takes you three or four minutes to clear the intersection. It's something you deal with. It's something you deal with. We're all, all the businesses, we've been paying taxes for over 35 years. I understand parking's been an issue. But again, I look back to when you expanded Lucky Lou's patio by 25 seats and they don't have any more parking than they did after the 25 seats as they did now. It's an ongoing thing. You're gonna hear something about the, the uh, brewery on the corner. You know, I, I'm not gonna speak against anybody doing business as long as it's done correctly. So to say not in my backyard, my neighbor across the street who, who wants to tell the yoga studio that they can't, you know, conduct an outdoor class at 8.30 on a Sunday because he's the mayor of Main Street, it doesn't hold water. It also, he cites his concern for traffic and he backs his car out of his driveway on Main Street and parks in front of the firehouse or in front of the old town. For what reason? To, to make us mad that some of our spots are taken up? Do we get mad if some of the Charles people park their cars in front of the old town 
as they're going to work at the Charles. No, it's just something you deal with. It's just something you deal with it. There's no malice intended anywhere. And I, I think it tends to take a personal effect in some of these comments. Nobody's trying to do anything negligent or, or off color or anything. You know, it's just the way it is. It, it's a different world than it was in 1975 or 1980 or 87, even when I got involved. I thank you for your time. I just hope you take everything to account as you guys usually do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul Brady. Thank you. Um, for a point of clarity, um, I believe one of the uh, commission commissioners earlier were, were asking about the uh, whether or not you could take your family to the pizza um, establishment and essentially would there be any signage or would you be able, if there was nowhere to sit, could you go sit in the bar and and um, and eat your pizza uh, with your kids? Uh, I, I think what wasn't clear, well, I know at least what wasn't clear for me was, um, even though it's one building, there are two different establishments. So kind of whose responsibility does that burden fall on to actually police to make sure that there isn't anything funny going on if people move from one section of the um, the establishment to the other, uh, especially where young kids are involved. Well, thank you. I, I think the answer is whoever controls that portion of the building is in charge of policing that portion of the building. Whoever controls the child. <laughs> Parents, nobody's bringing parent. Nobody's bringing their small children to a bar, like to the bar. Like I, I understand the concern here, but it's there's a lot of businesses that have a bar in it, such as the Charles, such as you know other establishments that have takeout. So, you know, we can we can talk about parking all we want, but you know, in terms of a child at a bar, I don't think that's a concern that we're really going to be discussing right now. Right. Right. Chairman Robert, can I can I ask a follow up question if you don't mind, please? Um, sure. Be, because I think what's not clear here, and I think what um, uh, Ryan, with all due respect, I think you're missing is that a restaurant has a fiduciary responsibility to its patrons to ensure that no underage or or a liquor is being served appropriately. It is combined. It's one establishment. We're talking about two separate establishments now in functioning in one building. Um, clearly you could go through one side to the next. And for you to say that people are not gonna bring their kids to bars. To um, the bar, to the bar, not uh, a bar. Well, with all due respect, I, I listened when you were talking. So please give me that respect, thank you. Um, for you to say that, that is, is not a true statement. Because the reality is if someone's looking for somewhere to sit and they can't find somewhere to sit, no one's going to wait 45 minutes to an hour to find somewhere to sit. I've seen people do that. So for you to say that, it's just like, I, I, I really want to know if what world you are living in with that comment, with all due respect, I, I do respect your comment, but um, it's something that I've seen with my own eyes. So um, thank you very much for your comment. I just wanted that to be very clear. Thank you. All right. Uh, Micah. Hi, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I just wanna clarify cause I am a liquor permit holder in the state of Connecticut. And therefore I'd like to just share with you guys what the actual laws are to some degree. And I know Andrew tried this briefly, uh, but because the bar is uh, in that same building and they, have a, they don't have a, a locked door between them, it is considered one venue and therefore the legal right to who to serve is the responsibility of the liquor permittee and therefore the bartender serving needs to ID anyone they suspect to be not of legal drinking age and a if you serve food in the state of Connecticut, the kid can be anywhere within the space. So as far as I understand, and obviously somebody should check with a liquor lawyer if you're truly concerned about that, but once they knock down that division between the two, and once there is food being served in any way, shape or form, you can have an entire group of school children in there for pizza and they can sit near the bar, not actually at the counter bar 
and have as much um, Shirley Temples as they care to please. So that's just, I mean, I'm just saying that as a point of information as a liquor permit holder already. So, and I think, um, and, you know, other people might know more than me, but I know that that to be the facts. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak on this application? Anybody else? Kind of giving up on Artie there. Does the applicant have anything to say in response to any of the particular <laughs> comments from the public that relate to um, you know, what it is that you're applying for? Um, no, I think just overall, we just want it to be clear that we understand, we hear your concerns about parking. Um, and hopefully we made clear that we're open to, um, you know, in discussion with Andy, things like paving the driveway and other options that um, would make that more palatable for the residents that we know do live around. Um, I think otherwise, hopefully we made clear that our plan is not to operate a drive through a giant corporate um, restaurant um, by any means we'd love to be a welcome part of the village and um, hopefully we made that that clear so thank you all for your um, comments and concerns we do hear you okay i guess at this point before we close the hearing i'll i'll kind of loop back to peter's memo of october 13th with have addressed some of the questions and comments uh in there through the course of the testimony. Um, I think there are a couple that still are maybe open or unclear and, um, you know, at the risk of being redundant. Um, question number three in particular, is the parking area also going to be used for loading and deliveries? Do you anticipate that the deliveries are going to be coming in from the front or from the back or, or what? As of right now, I'm going to explain expect them to go in through the front uh, the uh, narrow driveway um, would uh, would I would expect them to, to go through the front safely rather than um, having to go through the back okay uh, question four will table service be provided to the outdoor seating for food and beverages food yes only soft drinks um, other than that the uh, any alcoholic yes. beverages will be um, the old town all right. And the question specifically was table service. Is that something that you would be doing or something that they would be doing? Nope, that's us 100%. We would be taking, we would be taking care of all the tables outside <laughs> and all the tables inside. Okay. Uh, number five, will outdoor trash receptacles be provided? Things that you asked and to read. Pre outdoor trash receptacles be provided if we need on to the on the, if we need to on the patio yes but um like our, our plan is to like a, a regular restaurant would be to clear the tables ourselves and and okay. make sure that the space outside is clear I don't know if you I mean I don't know if you want a garbage can outside um but uh the plan is to to clear the tables ourselves okay um, six where is the nearest hand, handicap parking space located. Uh, do you know where that I I don't and I apologize I don't we never received this memo I'm sure I must have uh, overlooked it I don't see it now in our email either so perhaps um, later uh, we can get another copy of that sent and then um, we can just clarify our responses a little bit more I'm not sure in regards to your last question where the where nearest, the nearest handicapped, handicapped spaces spot. I mean I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know okay um, I don't know, Peter, do you have other things that I missed from that list of questions or any other comments that you, you have at this point? No, I'm, yeah, they, I'm looking at, I think we covered the parking lot repairs. There's a, there was a, there was a, um, a comment that that will be done with the drive, the curb cut and the driveway. So I think that was the only other one, uh, that may not have been touched upon. Okay. Understood. Okay. And I guess 
Um, just could you just please go over again the status of the potentially two reserve parking spaces where where that stands in the regulatory process and whose jurisdiction that is. Are you, are you asking me, Rich, or the, or the applicants? Well, somebody who can answer it, and I'm guessing it's you. <laughs> well, I, I, I directed them in the you know direction of the town manager's office. It sounded like um, there has been an effort uh, by the applicants to reach out to the town manager and start that conversation. So um, other than that, I can't speak to you know what the mindset is at this point with the with the, with the town manager. I can probably find out okay, tomorrow, but not right now. Yeah, I mean, and, and that I'll leave it up to the other members of the commission to sort of weigh in on this. But um, you know, if if that's an integral part of the business plan in terms of you know mitigating parking impacts, having that answered i think would be important to the commission's decision um and if we don't have the answer now you know do we, do we want to continue it until we do um i don't know does anybody else on the commission have um questions either for peter or the applicants based on the, the public testimony Rich, tony it's tony i i just want to revisit what you just said about uh, continuing this because the applicant didn't get Peter's or hasn't seen Peter's eight bullets and Mr. Gregory's six bullets uh, because of the questions from the public, the issue on safety, I think is significant. Uh, if the historic commission had any other additional comments, I'd like to know if there was anything else in, involved with that. Uh, the safety issues and the lighting issue, I think is significant. Um, you know, when the public talks about uh, increased grantless growth and, and our taxes have gone down. Maybe there is a free space going in the board, but well, we have the board, we don't have the fund zone. Maybe Puritan Furniture is a great op op uh, uh, development for the 80,000 square feet of office. This is another example of a positive thing for old Wethersfield, but these other questions, I think can't be our intention will be to have this, or our intention is to have that. I'd like to have the applicant uh, look at the questions, give a specific answer. So when, when and if we approve or deny, we talk about the 16 specific items that we will approve or deny with clarity and with, with, uh, with direct focus. Uh, to continue this for another day, I don't think would hurt anybody. Uh, and Deb Cohen, I think we have a seven pizza places already, so we might have three more, and I love pizza. Of, of the 11 that will be in town, I think I'll go to seven or eight of them all the time. So. Uh, um, I, I think the idea of continuing it further and having the applicant uh, be on the same page with the town engineer and the town planner is important in comments from the town manager. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, I didn't mean to totally dismiss um, Ms. Cohen's comment about pizza restaurants, but that we've, we've had the same issue with nail salons, bagel stores, donut stores, pizza places a couple of times. Um, you know, we, we can only we can only eat what's put in front of us on the table. Um, and, you know, as much as we might want to tell people that something is a good idea, a bad idea, we already have enough of this. Um, you know, we don't in, do that in most because... instances, other than than, you know, businesses serving, um, you know, nothing but alcohol that that's sort of outside the, the purview of our jurisdiction um, as it as it stands under state law but uh, I don't know does anybody else have any questions or comments that um, they want to raise tonight I, I think um, you know with all due respect to all of the information that's been provided there are some things that you know I think we'd all feel better if they got nailed down um, before the next meeting so that we could proceed intelligently Mr. Chairman Chairman Jim. Well, Mr. Jim, Mr. Chairman Jim, Peter. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, I think it'd be a good idea to have an actual print of the parking lot so we have an actual scale of what's going on with the cooler and anything else that's going to be back there and how the parking lot actually lays out and also 
uh, what if they have a lighting scheme and there probably should be lighting in that driveway uh, updated or whatever, to enhance the safety as best as possible. And if there's lighting required, you know, we should probably consider some lighting in that parking lot to cre create as safe a situation in that driveway as possible and put that on the plan. Uh, Peter. Yeah, thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I think we have to nail down a few items and, and I'm asking the applicant to be a little bit more precise. Uh, I'm in favor of continuance and, and to me, there's a lot of open questions that I'd like some answers to. I'll give you just some examples. You know, we, we talked about the fact that you like your own people uh, bringing in uh, a third party is not the best. It, it, it doesn't work for you really. It doesn't work for the neighbors. It doesn't work for the safety. So I'd like to have a definitive answer from you are you willing to say, no, we're not going to use third parties. We will have, you know, two cars and they'll be located in this area. And I'll manage those people to be safe and to provide good service. I mean, I heard that you may consider it, but I, I don't know if that's a reality or not. So I'd like a definitive answer on that uh, before I can make a decision on, on, on this application. Uh, and you did indicate that you think about that. So I'd, I'd like you to just consider that because uh, it's an open item for me. Uh, as far as safety, I'm a resident of Old Weathersfield and I ride my bike a lot through Old Weathersfield. And I go around that corner a lot and it is, you know, at times iffy. Uh, I've had some close calls around the corners personally so uh, I do think that safety is a big issue here. Be beyond the parking, safety is a big issue. And I really haven't heard from, from uh, either the town uh, engineer uh, or the police department. I'm not sure that's your job uh, for the applicant. I don't think it is your job, but, but Peter, I, I really think we need a better assessment of the safety issue here and what, what that means in reference to this application. And, and if there are concerns for safety, then what mitigating things can be done that the applicant could consider uh, you know, to, 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 to alleviate the problem? I mean, hopefully there's a solution. Hopefully uh, there's a balance here that, that, that can be struck between the safety of the residents in the area and the operation that you guys want, want to do. Uh, so those are a couple of the open items that, that I think need to be addressed. Madam, Ch Madam Chairman, uh, I had a quick question. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The um, present use of the building opposed to the new use of the building. That's the one thing that was never brought up by the owner or the applicant. Um, I've known the establishment of Old Town for several years and seen several restaurants come, go, and barely survive there. And I'm just trying to figure out right now what it presently is used for, use is, and what the new use will be. Because somehow I don't think there's a change in use. Because um, I'm not sure, but I believe Old Town presently serves food to their clients. So under what my impression was, the change of use was because we were um, not having our own tables and chairs, uh, that it was going to be um, what I understood strictly takeout, but we were partnering with the old town to use their their dining room. So that I, I, my understanding was that triggered a change in use, but uh, um, and, and that's why we, we're here right now. If um, I, I believe if we weren't eliminating any of our, our tables and, and chairs, I think that the, the use would, would have been the same and it would have continued as a restaurant. Okay, I just didn't know what the present use was for the for the um, property right now. That's why I was just trying to establish that. Yeah. Before. David, um, just David, just for the record, we distinguish between sit down and takeout. They're two different uh, types of yeah. restaurants, so um, it's a change of use in the, in that regard. Okay. So is that regardless of like you know 
the ultimate reality of how this would operate. Like people would go there and potentially be eating the pizzas either inside or out at the patio operating as if it's a restaurant. Like they're still going to end up doing that. And then there's going to be the takeout aspect of it. Like I'm yeah, not th- missing anything here, right? No, I think, well, I think th- that's a little spin on this particular one, but you know, traditionally a takeout restaurant is exclusively takeout. Um, this one has a, as, as I said, a little bit of a hybrid feel to it because they're going to use the seating um, next door. Um, but yeah. in essence on its own, it's a, it's a takeout facility and a takeout restaurant has different characteristics than a sit down restaurant as we've specifically discussed tonight. So the purpose of the hearing is to, you know, discuss and debate all of those issues. Yeah. And I think like, you know, there's, there's certain areas in town where a takeout restaurant, you know, would, would, would feel very much like a takeout restaurant, like a, like a Stella's or something like, you know, a place that isn't necessarily going to have all of that walking traffic, people who want to just like stop and grab some food and eat it there and then leave or, you know, walking, stop, pick it up and leave. Um, so anyway, while I'm, while I'm talking, uh, one, one thing that I do want to ask about and potentially discuss at the next meeting is the, I know handicap parking hasn't really been brought up a ton. It has been brought up a little bit, um, you know, but for instance, just down the street at, you know, between Lou's and the, the complex across the street from Lou's, there's a single handicap spot. There used to be more, we eliminated some. I'm curious of the history of that because in my opinion, you know, there, there isn't a ton of space up in this location. There isn't as much commercial density. So I'm just wondering if we even bother discussing that or if we just at least touch on the history of why we only have one spot there. Um, because, you know, in my opinion, we're not really changing the use of the building all that much that requires us to, to now go into like, oh, now we need, you know, more handicap parking because, you know, the business is is going to be potentially more successful. And that's, in my opinion, the kind of the mood of this meeting is we're worried that the business is going to be too successful. (laughs) So (laughs) it's like, so I'm like, I I want to make sure that we're, you know, at least discussing that and making sure that we're above board in terms of the handicap accessibility of it, because there's a lot of ADA requirements there um you know so just maybe maybe make sure we have the history of why we eliminated some in the you know a little bit further south and what we can kind of not get away with but what's the minimum that we need for this location right okay so there seems to be some sentiment toward continuing this hearing is there anything anybody um feels the need to discuss tonight before we vote on doing that I just have one very simple question. Mr. Sanzero in the chat, um, which didn't probably cross everybody had indicated, the plan was to have five tables inside that would be usable by the pizza um, service. And my question is, how many seats in total would that be? Is it four seats a table, 20 seats? I don't know if the applicant knows that, the answer to that. Um, I, I don't I don't know the answer to to that specifically based on like what tables he wants to choose um, and what would work best for for uh, the space itself. Um, I, I would hope that it would be twenty, but I also don't want to cram people in. We're still talking about um, COVID. Some people are still scared and still nervous. Um, but in our West Hartford restaurant, the majority of tables do have four chairs with them, so that's what we're used to. What's the capacity seating indoor there in West Hartford? 65. Okay. It's a, it's a much bigger space than, yeah. Thank you. Yep. All right. Um, at this point, I, I would encourage a motion to continue this hearing to our November 3rd meeting at seven o'clock. I'll make that motion. It's been made, Mr. Chairman, by George. All right. Um, so by I think. Tony was closer, so I heard his sound first. Um, I'll give George the second on that. I'll give a second. Um, okay. Is there uh, is there any discussion? I'll uh, see. see Peter for this one. Um, all in favor of continuing the hearing, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, so that hearing is continued to November 3rd. Um, in the interest of time, um, I would entertain a motion to move item 3.2 uh, to after 3.4 so that we can um, deal with the, the private public applications before we get into our own business. Um, motion so made, Mr. Chairman, by George. Okay. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Motion by George, second by Tom to move the cannabis moratorium to after the Hartford Brewing. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? All right. Uh, hopefully this will be a palate cleanser um, of a brief application, 2099, Andrea and Michael Horak, site plan and design review in accordance with section 52D1 for a change of use for a dog grooming business at 734 Silestine Highway. Okay, I'm leaving. Oh, wait, there's Norm. Um, anybody here? From Korak? Yes. yes. We're here. How are you doing? Good. Uh, could you just give us your name and address for the record and let us know what you'd like to do? Sure. My name is Michael Horak, and this is my wife, Andrea Horak. And we are planning on starting a dog grooming facility at 734 Silestine Highway. Okay. And um, let me just shrink this down real quick. So my wife, Andrea, she started her business, Podtastic Cuts, uh, three, about three years ago, officially. Uh, she has a mobile dog grooming business here in town. And it's come to the point where we feel it's necessary to expand into a brick and mortar and to just expand the business. Andrea gets calls and she has turned away people every single day because apparently there's an overwhelming need for more grooming facilities in Weathersfield, um, Andrea actually has friends that had businesses in town. One of them was Pups to Mutts that um, just recently closed in town. And um, she was friends with her and she also know, knows um, some of the people over at Ooh La La as well, who are actually excited that, you know, we're potentially opening up a storefront here They in said that they have turn away clients every single day because um, they're too overbooked and she, when I told her, I was thinking she was extremely excited to have somebody to recommend for all these dogs that need to be groomed. Okay. And so if I can take you to, you know, what we're trying to do is we, we signed a five-year lease with uh, Leonardo and I do apologize for the, the really the hand-drawn, um, what's it called, floor plan. We had a, we had an official floor plan, but something happened with the file and the file was humongous. And when we tried to print it out, it just came out completely blurry. And then the, the file itself was completely blurry. So I did want to just, you know, map it out the best we could to, to present to you. So um, I don't know if anyone has it in front of them, but I just kind of wanted to go through the, the nature of the business and how we're gonna place everything and kind of go from there. Okay, good idea. All right, so pretty much, you know, it, it, it's a dog grooming facility. Um, we're not doing any boarding, training, anything like that. Um, it's just really just haircut, bathe haircut, you know, in and out service. Um, you know, we're gonna be doing things like nail clipping, uh, ear cleaning, brushing, um, jealous treatments, you know, tick and flea, flea and tick treatments, um, junk treatment, stuff like that. Um, I don't even know, are you, I don't even, we're not doing cats. We're just doing dogs, small, medium dogs. Um, sorry, I keep messing up this zoom file and I just wanted to kind of walk you through the floor plan real quick. So the front is going to be obviously storefront is going to be the waiting area. Our vision here is, 
you know, you can come in it, we're really not, we don't really want to be in the business of holding onto someone's dog all day. Um, you know, it's really just, Hey, drop it off for your appointment. You know, it's going to take this long, come pick it up at a certain time. So, but if so customer has to wait a few minutes, we have, we're going to have ample amount of seating and we are actually going to have kind of like a, a social media wall. So what we wanted to do on the left side of the wall was kind of put like an artificial turf on it. And, you know, we will have a Bameos and a couple of York chairs and the customers want to take pictures of their dog to post on social media or whatever. It just kind of gives them that friendly environment, you know, like we, we want you here, you know, we want you to take pictures. We want you to be proud of how your animal looks and like that. But at the same time, we want to be able to create a space where our work area is separated from that kind of area, you know, to keep the animals calm at all times. So what we're proposing is kind of building two overlapping walls. You know, one wall will be 11 and a half feet by four and a half inches thick. And then the wall behind it would be 10 feet by four and a half inches. And they would just overlap each other. So it does create that division. Um, sorry. Then I know you see in front of the white wall, it says shelves for retail. Uh, we do not plan on starting retail right away. We just kind of want to get a, a feel for everything. But as far as that, there's going to be a swing door in between. This is all based on, you know, building codes and making sure we can pull building permits for this. Um, this area is really only one of two places that we're really doing a construction. The other place would be... Um, towards the back of the store where we would have the, the dog grooming tub. So we would have to cut into the plumbing back there, which the area that we chose is, it's near the bathroom, but it's also near all the plumbing. So we're really not having to do, we wouldn't have to do much demolition or you know creating new plumbing across the building. We're trying to keep it all in one space just so we're not you know kind of creating a havoc. Um, but yeah, so as far as that's the front of the store, and then the middle of the store is going to be our, our work area. You know, we're going to have two setups with two grooming tables, two workstations. Um, the plan is to have staff, two groomers, and one person in front of the store to take care of customers, and then to have the two groomers in the back. And on the opposite side is where, you know, hopefully, like I said, hopefully if we're holding on to dogs. It's not for long, but we will have the proper equipment to do so. And, um, you know, one the, up top on the, the middle of the store page, you'll see it says three stack dog cage. And all that is, is just, it's a, it's like a tower cage. It's three cages, you know, bottom, middle, top. And we'll be holding, like I said, small to medium dogs in there. And then if we do have a lot lar larger canine, we'll have two stack cages in the middle to hold them and then the cage towards the bottom of the page that would be if there was an aggressive dog um we definitely want to keep them separated from all, obviously all the other animals we don't want anyone's dog getting hurt attacked anything like that how do you control dogs that get out at tm or noisy um so basically um we're gonna have our for the noise control, we're going to be um, on the wall, on the, that, outside the outside wall. wall. So um, if there's any kind of noise, no, it won't bother anybody else in the building. Um, if a dog is like um, scared of the cages, then obviously like we'll make special um, accommodations. accommodations for, um, you know, we'll tell the owners, um, you know, as soon as you can get here, we'll, you know, keep your dog in a safe place um, where it's not in a cage or... Um, One thing we've been really good at... You, you'll deal with it like an unruly child at school, right? Sort of. Right. They may have or an unruly commission member. Yeah, and one thing we've been really good about with this business is never... Again, like you would never force a child into a situation that they were scared of, right? So same thing with a dog or any any kind of animal is that the dog is really nervous the dog generally tells you that yeah. it's nervous and you know it may 
do something as simple as growl or may do something as simple as put his mouth over your hand one time. He's letting you know, I don't want this done. And we, we're, we're not like in the business of forcing it on them, right? So we're not trying to stress them out and create an even larger situation than it has to be. You know, and we really, you know, and, and I do feel like clients appreciate that, that, you know, we'd rather be honest and kind of put their dog or a cat or whatever through something like that. Um, I went to uh, school for dog grooming. So I was trained to know um, all the different signs that a dog's too stressed out or I know how to approach a dog um, to see the aggression. Um, so if the dog's aggressive at all, um, obviously we're not gonna stress out the dog, like the dog is our number one concern. Um, and I've been doing the mobile for a little over three years now. And um, what in Weathersfield, what people love the most is that it's the one-on-one. Um, and there's not a lot of dog, there's no, well, the mobile, there's no dogs except for theirs. And they really like that. So I'm trying to kind of keep that going with the storefront. Like it's going to be by appointment only. Um, I plan on only having a couple dogs in the um, shop at a time. Um, and it's only going to be like if they're at work and they need an extra hour on their lunch break. Um, that's when we're going to be holding the dogs. But other than that, we want to kind of just in stru- and out structured environment, um, let them go back to their owner as quickly as possible. So the less stress, the better. Thank you. Yes, you're Good. welcome. Um, can I ask a quick question, Rich? Um, sure, so it looks, looks from the plan as if you have two grooming tables. So does that mean two or three operators there at one time? Cool. Well, it would be, yeah, it would be two, um, one person per table. Yep. Um, yes. And, and just out of curiosity, what's the average, how many thought, you know, is each appointment like 30 minutes um, or 45 minutes? Or yeah, usually for small dogs, it usually takes about 45 minutes. Um, we're probably going to have like drop off times. So I'm thinking like right when we open, have like two dogs dropped off and then, you know, an hour later, two more dogs dropped off yeah, an hour be, later. It'll be, it'll be staggered. staggered. So yeah. again, there won't be too many um, dogs in, at the same time. Okay, good. I can, from, from personal but, experience, when we had our dog, I can you know, say that, that the, the flow of drop-offs and pickups was very, very spread out and, and not that many per hour. So to me, it seems like a low impact type of use opposed right. to a you know, barber shop where you might have 10 people or 15 people waiting to get a haircut or something. Right. right. But at the same time, we want to be prepared in case there is a situation where a client can't pick up their dog for an hour or two. That's why we, we don't want to just have one cage and then right. we got two dogs in one cage. And I've been sense. listening to a lot of feedback from my clients because when I started the mobile, they were going to the places around what Weathersfield and Rocky Hill mostly. And um, the biggest, um, the biggest things that they didn't really like were having all the dog, like they have them dropped off first thing in the morning and then they don't get done until like some dogs are in cages all day long. And um, one in particular, I had a complaint saying that all the dogs were just running around together. And when they picked up their golden retriever, another dog actually peed on the dog. <laughs> And they asked, you know, can you rebathe my dog? It just got peed on. And she was like, nope, I am too busy with all these old dogs. So he called me and now he's very happy with his services with the grooming. So thank you. Yes, you're welcome. All right. Anybody else on the commission have any questions for the applicants? Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask a question about the uh, the noise again. I, I didn't quite understand what you said about if you got barking dogs, you so, meant that it's not going to bother. Don't you have an adjoining wall with one business and you have an exterior wall? How, how do you control the sound again? So we are trying, what we want to do is we want to have the, the dogs who are waiting, the ones that may bark in the cage, have it on the outside wall adjacent to the neighboring business which is the furniture consignment shop. And uh, yeah, we wouldn't want to put 
any noisy dogs against the wall, you know, to create, uh, you know, a commotion for her business or her clients. So we do want to store them as, you know, far away from her wall as possible. This is, this is the, dogs, this is the dogs, consignment shop. Are you, are yes. you, so you're adjacent to that, right? Correct. Yeah. So I, I, I think that even though the dog is not against the wall, the barking uh, travels, I mean, sound is sound that vibrates against the wall. Are you doing anything to soundproof the adjacent wall to, to the um, furniture place? As of right now, we did not have a plan in place for that, but if it does become a problem, we will be very good neighbors to, to the consignment shop and we will put plans in place to do soundproofing, absolutely. Yeah, it's, you know, just, and I know something about this and actually my son is a sound engineer. Uh, there are pretty cheap ways to do that. Right. So you may just as well be a good neighbor and think about it, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's not a big deal. And uh, that's probably the only problem I see here. Uh, you know. Yeah, we, we, we will we'll definitely. definitely. Yeah. Because that, that wall is going to act like a drum. Uh, even though the dog is on the other side, it's, it's going to bounce off that wall and it's going to come through into the other area. Yeah, and trust me, Peter, it, it definitely crosses my mind whenever I'm in there, you know, because I've already, you know, repainted the walls in there and it, it crosses my mind like I can see where they put up walls where the doors used to be that connected to it. And, um, you know, it's crazy. Um, the wall is completely solid until you hit that part and then you hear that echo. So I, I understand how the noise travels. So it, it has crossed my mind. No, we did not plan for it, but we can absolutely yeah, we'll definitely. look into it. That's just common courtesy. So yeah. yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Exterior it's signage. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. Exterior sure. signage will be the same as it is now in the same locations. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? The ex the exterior signage. Will you have so, any new, or will it uh, just take the place of the existing? No, that's going to be new, and I do apologize. I at least wanted to have a concept to show you. Um, my brother-in-law, he's helping us design this place, and uh, he's been in talks with a sign company over what we're going to do. And um, the frame, like, I know we have to do the sign application. I've just been waiting to get the specs of everything. But more or less, it's going to be a dark wood, right? It's going to be a dark wood finish going, we're going to take the old sign frame down, the old sign down. I'm going to do a dark wood finish with white lettering with a couple of lights above it. And um, yeah, so there, there will probably be a, a little construction there, but you know, perhaps we're going to pull the building permit or apply for the building permit for it. But yeah, the sign will completely change out there as long okay. as it's approved. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, George, George here. Yeah. I like the I like the site and these days, and when I went down there, I was surprised, of course, that it's newly paved, and I was very impressed with that. It looked very nice, and uh, there on the side where the driveway is and that kind of thing, but it runs right down to the back, and uh, they're fortunate to be there. I think. So, yeah, we, we definitely got lucky with that, and then they actually they actually put a whole new uh, brand new HVAC system there as well. Okay, anybody else from the commission? This one is not a public hearing, so does somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve this application, Mr. Chairman. George. Second. Second, Joe. All right, motion by George, second by Joe. Uh, Peter, did you have any conditions or stipulations? No, as... Um... As George mentioned, the parking lot and the building uh, are all in very uh, good shape. Um, and I didn't see any particular uh, conditions. They're not boarding animals. Uh, you know, we've had that issue with other locations. So, no, I, I see no need for any conditions. Okay, thank you. All right, any I'll, further I'll discussion? I'll discuss something, though. I think the applicant indicated he might do something to improve the sound issues, as Peter suggested. Yes, correct. I think they will, without a condition. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. 
guess uh, it's um, Dave's turn to vote on this one. Um, all in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Thank uh, you. Next item, application, public hearing application 3000. 21Z. It's like when your car odometer goes over 100,000. Now we're up to application 3,000. <laughs> um, I would think it would be like 2,100, but um, 3,021Z, Hartford Brewing Company, LLC, special permit in accordance with section 52F2 and 9 and 62D5. Parking reduction for a change of use to a brew, t brew pub with outside dining at 245 Main Street. Is there someone here on behalf of the applicant? Yes, sir. That's me. I'm Micah Kerr. Okay. I, live at, I live at 553 Maple Street in Wethersfield, and I have for the last 12 years. So I am uh, I'm one of us, as they say. Uh, today, I'll also have my um, architect and my site plan engineer will go over their aspects. Um, I just wanted to lead off because um, I've been in front of you guys a few times before, and I think the community knows me to some degree at this point, so it's a pretty good starting point. Um, so first off, I just kind of want to go through a little bit of brief history, and it's more just, you know, it's a fun story, but it's really important for what I'm doing here. Um, as you may know, 245 Main Street is, it's the main intersection in town. Um, half the cars that see the building are on their way to the DMV. The other half are on their way to visit somebody in the village or visit a business. So we're right there on the main drag, you know. And when I moved to town, I saw that building. And like all you guys, I looked in the windows. Some of you folks have been here long enough that you may remember when the Masons were in there. Um, but you know, that, that corner has been uh, really at the heart of the community for a couple hundred years now. There was once a building on site that still stands. It's now currently my backyard neighbor, um, Paul, who is on the call. He talked last time, but he lives in the house, which is pretty cool. That house used to host uh, meetings in the upstairs for the um, effectively like um, the veterans uh, group for the American Revolution. So. We're talking about, you know, the, the folks who really built this country um, had their fraternal organization on that property and they talked and made plans for the community that right now we are the people who are deciding the future for. Right. So take that for what it is um, in that space. It was a fraternal organization. Eventually, um, the membership uh, got a lot smaller and what they ended up having to do was um, come up with a new plan. The, the Masonic organization got a lot bigger um, and they ended up uh, moving that building and another in order to place uh, the current Masonic temple where it is. But it's really important, the other building that was moved. And so this is when, if I can share my screen, I have a, just a brief deck and I'll run you guys through it. Um, don't, is, is that working? Nope. Uh, See anything. Oh, wait, there we go. Do you see it now? No. No. Hey. Share screen, host disabled. I am disabled. The host needs to enable it. Let's see what the problem is here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not the host. I'm just. The MC. I was just, just going to call you the MC. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. I will paint you a verbal picture. Long, long ago. You, know, you are barred. Yeah. Well, I can't sing, so this is the best I can do. I then denied. Yeah, <laughs> quick, hold on, let me pull up my Spotify, you know. Um, yeah, it's not giving me the ability to share your screen here uh, or let you co-host or anything like that. Um, 
Hmm. Well, anyone, okay. anyone else out there have any thoughts on this? Normally it comes up as an option. It's not coming up as an option now. Um, well, that's it looks like two other town accounts. Maybe one of them can do it. Yeah, there's a few town accounts. Well, uh, I mean, I can start, I can share a little bit of it while you guys figure that. Just give me a holler, interrupt me, and I'll start talking because I know everyone's been on here already for two and a half hours. Um, Denise, if, you, if Denise is out there, maybe she can do that. Oh, now, now we got it. Somebody there we go. Did something. Yep, there well, we go. You got it? Yep. All right. All right. Let me slideshow. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is an, uh, an advertisement that was in the Hartford Current in 1865. This is the building that was on the corner um, right when the when Church Street was first built. Uh, prior to this, uh, there was no street. They actually built that road for the horse-drawn um, cars there in the photo. So EA Mills um, had a wonderful business idea, and it was to open an eating hall with the very first liquor license in this in this town of Weathersfield. And so this property, this corner in the center of the village was the first liquor license in town. Um, at the time in the 1865, uh, people did, um, there weren't commercial breweries. Uh, in the state of Connecticut at that time, there was one commercial brewery in New Haven. The influx of German immigrants that really what is created what we know of as a commercial brewery, uh, that, that didn't happen until after 1865. Uh, the first brewery opened in, Hartford actually later, I think it was 1866, um, and then it quickly changed names and changed ownerships a few times. Uh, so the reality is, is for them to open this drink, this first class eats and drinks for the ladies and gents, as they say, um, they had to make their own beer. So back in 1865, the town saw fit to allow not only for the good people of Weathersfield to drink beer on this exact piece of land, but they also allowed the publican to make their own beer to do so. Um, while that may be a little bit of a leap of a faith, it's just a fact that there was not brewing on a commercial basis happening yet in America. So it's a pretty good safe bet. So I just wanna bring you to that little piece of history. So what I really am trying to do is I'm trying to bring a little bit of what was here back um, because it's the center of the town and, and like it or not, uh, sharing a beverage with your neighbors, sometimes better than tall fences. So here's the building that was later built by the Masonic um, Grand Lodge. And you can see this is, this is pretty much the listing photo. Um, I guess I should thank Andy Dillon for this. Um, but so what I'm, what I'm planning on doing with this building is, is pretty simple. You know, I'm going to bring it back to what it did. It, when it was inaugurated as a, a, a Masonic temple, it was the Hospitality Lodge, and, and that was its nickname and still is to this day. The, uh, the Weathersfield um, Masons meet under the same lodge number and with the same name, the same moniker as the, the Hospitality Lodge to this day. And um, as part of what I'm trying to do, I, I even hope to allow them to come back and meet in the upstairs in the future. But um, unfortunately, I won't be able to activate the upstairs at this time due to some fire um, zone fire uh, regulations. So um, here's your history, you know, like back when the Masons built this, they built it in 1922 uh, to do so. The other buildings that were there, they actually moved them right down the street. So my immediate neighbor, uh, I say behind me, but it's down Church Street, so next to me, um, that building was uh, one of the two buildings that was there. And then the next one, you might know it as quote unquote, the old hotel, that was, this building here, uh, the E.H. Hills house. So we have still saved those houses and then now what's still there, what's there today. Uh, in 1933, they put in a fire escape and in 48, they put a, a second egress in the basement to allow folks to get out of the basement. Um, in 1997, the Masons vacated the building, sold it to private owners and um, the since then we've gone through I can't tell you how many owners, I think it's three owners officially, but as y'all know, there's probably been a dozen applications, uh, several of which have been approved over the years for various uses. Um, we have had um, economic development proposals to come forward by the town. In 2013, there was an entire um, study done 
that recommended activating this building um, for some use that involved assembly, which is, you'll note, that's what I'm here to do. And, um, you know, also I, I noted on this slide, you'll see back in 1997 at around the time it was closed, the capacity of the building would have been approximately 400 people per floor. As an assembly use building, the, um, the, the numbers at the time would have allowed that. By modern standards, that number comes down to 300. That's because fire codes changed quite a bit. Things like the station fire um, have made it so we don't like such uh, tight crowds. So, you know, that brings us to kind of where we are today, today, which is my application, right? So I'm here to apply for a change of use. But what's interesting is I'm only applying for a change of use because it's been empty. Had the Masons been in there and had we not gone through 30 iterations of some form of residential use, office use, assisted living facility, um, frankly, I'm not sure there's just, there was a lot of applications. I'm sure you, you guys could tell me stories. Um, but, you know, for, for, what, for what I'm doing, I'm just trying to keep the assembly use that it used to have. And instead of as a fraternal order, I want it to be assembly use brew pub, which is a use that you may recall I added to this, the town rolls. Oh boy, what, six months ago now was that? And I, instead of a capacity of 400 per floor, which is what it certainly had when it closed, or 300 per floor, which is what it would have today if it was assembly use, I'm seeking a occupancy of 179. So I hope just starting from that point alone, you see that I'm trying to return the building to what it was historically. I'm trying to turn the property back to what it was, but I'm also not asking for a heck of a lot compared to what was there when it was built and approved by the predecessors on these actual committees um, for the town when they approved to build it. So uh, this is, you know, this is it. This is what I'm looking at. This is the current state of the inside. I've actually done quite a bit of work since then because it uh, was in pretty bad shape and I wanted to have all the structural engineering work done so that I could, uh, if I receive approval, uh, get right on the actual um, finishing work. But as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's just a big open space. Any of the charm that was there has been destroyed. So anything that I am proposing isn't to ruin something that's there, it's only to enhance, okay? Um, I hope you agree with that statement. Obviously that's a subjective statement and you can have your own opinion. But as you can see in the state in this photo, um, which was when it was listed for sale most recently, and I've seen photos that look just like this from as far back as 2013, uh, but I'm sure it was vacant. Uh, it has been vacant since 1997, as we know. Um, so this is what I'm looking to do. I'm not going to go into all the details now. I'll leave that to the professionals because I pay them for that. Um, but here's that very same space that you were just looking in, and, and I hope to put in a bar, and I hope to have communal seating where you know you actually have to talk to your neighbor which is a little bit of a novel thing these days and uh obviously some pretty significant restrooms because being on that corner not only will i have to serve my patrons but anyone who's walking around the village who's got a kid who's got to go pee i know they're going to be knocking on my door so i might as well have a few extra toilets right um it's just you know it's a given <laughs> there's, there's if you're on the corner you're going to be the guy you know um also you know, this is kind of what I would look at as like the home base for what I've been building for the last four years. I came to this um, this same commission. Obviously, there were a few different members then, but there are some same ones. And I got my barn on my property approved to act as a warehousing for my my business. And I've been operating in four years off my property here in Maple Street. And uh, it's about time that ends because um, I can't keep doing it this way. I need to get it, you know, into the brick and mortar and have a place where I can actually have folks come in the front door and have a beer. And like I say, talk to your neighbor. Um, so, and then just, I want to show the basement because this is kind of, I think where it comes into some more importance when it comes into the actual zoning, when it comes to a change of use. Um, while a lot of the Masonic temples on a national level did brew their own beer, it is my understanding that the Weathersfield temple never brewed their own beer. Uh, there still are a handful that still brew in their own beer, but when it was a Masonic temple, they did have a, a, a drinking, a liquor license, so they were able to consume beer and sell beer on premise, although they just did it to their private group. What you're seeing here is my basement. Um, I have the circles represent brewing tanks. 
I know a lot of folks start to question, um, you know, what I'm really doing in terms of my goals and my intentions. I've told a lot of folks, yeah, I'm brewing beer here, but I'm not going to be brewing so much beer that is going to change the character of the area. I live here. I am neighbors to a lot of you folks. I see some of you guys around town. I know, you know, so I'm not, I'm not looking to be a bait and switch kind of guy here. This is going to be where I do a lot of my experimental brewing, small batch brewing, and primarily as my first customer facing aspect of my business. So in a way, it's sort of like my, my business growing up. This isn't where I'm gonna run a warehouse to bring beer to Carbone's Prime or to the river or to whomever I'm selling beer for, um, or to Sammy's, Sammy, I gotta mention Sammy's by Right Liquors on Silas Dean. Uh, <laughs> but it, it is where I'll make the beers that the people on premise are gonna drink. And then when I wanna make a bigger batch that will go out to the restaurants, I'll, I'll brew it off site, which is where I currently produce all my beer. I currently produce all my beer in various other towns from Walkett, Connecticut to Pawkatuck, Connecticut, and I do a small amount in Rocky Hill. My hope is to move all of my or most of my production brewing to Rocky Hill at some point with just um, a, a reasonable amount of production here in the village. So that means, yeah, no huge semis delivering pallets of anything. Um, the size of these tanks, they're approximately three feet in diameter, so each of those circles is you know, you can, it's like a nice size tree. Um, we're not, I'm not going to be bringing tons and tons of grain in and out of this basement. That's not, not what I'm here for. It will have the similar um, turn of, of deliveries as any, as any restaurant in town, you know, that receives uh, and uh, that receives goods from a, from a supplier. I do have a kitchen drawn on here that you'll see, and, and don't mind some of the drawing aspects that I just use this for a screenshot, show the engineer drawings for structural engineering. Um, we've already got those permits and, and we've, we're in the process of doing them. I just wanted to be able to protect the investment while we were moving forward with these designs. Um, so you can see, I'll be brewing beer down here, but it's not gonna be some kind of like, like what you saw at Two Roads. If you go down to Two Roads, that's, that's, a, that's a $27 million production brewing system that's this is this is not that this is a, a five barrel system is what i have drawn on here and i'm fairly certain a five barrel system will not actually fit in the eight foot ceiling that i have um, i probably have to go to a three and a half barrel which is you know 150 gallons um so you know i, I said before you know its last use was as a fraternal order under the assembly use and the current fire code would allow 300 per floor so that would be 600 people in the building and you know we're kind of going to get into parking here a little bit so i just want to like draw a corollary before i really get into the parking um one parking space per 50 square feet of assembly use is how the town determines parking now the other option is one space for every four in your maximum occupancy and as you can see in the spreadsheet there um at 2800 square feet per floor that is 300 people, right? If you do the math, it's pretty straight. And at every 50 square feet, that's 56 parking spaces per um, per floor. That's for the first floor and the ground floor. So you would need 112 parking spaces, bare minimum, to operate this as a Masonic temple today. So just please let that soak in. What was approved by the town today would have a minimum of 112 spaces allocated to it. So if it does not still have those spaces, uh, where did they go would be a question I'll ask. But I don't think we'll need to go there. This is just as an exercise for your minds just to sit on that for a second. As you can see, it can go worse if we were at the 400 per, per floor um, and doing the parking per every four um, occupants, there is the honest a, a possibility of as many as 200 parking spaces would have to be allocated to this building as a Masonic temple if it were to be constructed today. So, you know, this comes to a real fundamental question in the village is, is it, is it the building's responsibility to manufacture all the parking when the building's 100th birthday is, is this year, right? It's 100 years old, this isn't a new building. So, um, with that being said, let's get into the parking study analysis. Peter very clearly said a lot has changed since this parking study was done. The last date of the study was Columbus Day in 2019. 
So very clearly, that's precisely two years and a few weeks ago, right? So the data is two years old. In that time, we've added two major things. We've added the Charles, we've added Linochis. There's been some other tweaks. People say that a lot more people come into the village. I've heard a lot of anecdotal comments when speaking about the pizza place and other things. I'll only ask, I think we all have a right to share our anecdotal comments. So if I'm gonna share my anecdotal comment, every time I go down to this building, I park in the very first closest spot. I did that today. <laughs> oh, actually, sorry, today I pulled around the back because I had to pull around the back. But yesterday I parked right in front. I consistently parked right in front. So we can't just allow somebody to say their anecdotal experience is what our parking situation is. So I'm basing this on the real data we got precisely two years ago. And I'm gonna assume the worst since then, okay? So if we assume the Charles came, we know that happened, Lenochi's happened. Um, let's ignore the areas that they were in. This is a map directly from the parking uh, study. All the stuff on the bottom of your screen, I don't know, can you all see my cursor by chance or no? Yep, yeah, I can right. see it. So you see yeah. where that 28 is? Uh, that's the answer to however many spots the parking study thought was there. Um, but that's a, being that <laughs> it is the public space as is the Keeney Street lot over here. I'm, I'm including for the sake of this, those to be the end of the world for me. So everything south of that, I'm not even thinking about it, all right? Same as when I start to get to, um, you know, there's the Charles, by the way, on the red star in the middle, and there's Lenochis, right? So if you look at this, the stuff up at the top, we're not going to worry about. The stuff at the bottom, we're not going to worry about. I do care about the two public parking spaces, the two public parking lots, I should say, and I care that, you know, there is um, a off-street private parking area up there um, for Chase, uh, for, for Heart Seeds. And the reason for that is, is because when I looked at the parking situation and understood that the church uh, may or may not allow folks to park, I think there's been some discussion and there was a big hullabaloo around the Charles and a big hullabaloo around the gardens um, at the um, firehouse. Uh, I just, you know, we don't know what's happening, but we do know that you as, as a village, there is a lot of effort being made as to trying to figure out a solution. There's like, there might be some partnerships, public private between the town and otherwise. Um, for my part, the uh, first church is not willing to, to sign a deal with an individual. They will only work with the town. So I encourage the town to sign some kind of agreement with them. I sent him a letter as such. Um, for, for me as a, a business owner, uh, I respect all the businesses in town. And I, I think one great thing about what I'm doing is my hours are, are my peak hours are not their peak hours. Um, most people in the brewing industry don't get up until afternoon and the busiest time in Old Weathersfield is pretty much in, after lunch, it's pretty quiet. Um, there's obviously been some changes to that in recent times, but at the same time, my hours line up differently than pretty well everyone um, near me. So uh, that said, let's get into a little bit more fun of this. Um, I took that parking study and I, I decided to do an invert. Instead of us talk about how busy everything was, Let's talk about how many free spaces there are. These are the factual numbers. This is non anecdotal. This is actually observed. So if there were 40 spaces, as you can see here on Hartford Ave, on average, 26 were available, right? So you can see there are some areas where most of the spots were taken. In front of Heirloom Market, we all know it's pretty busy most of the time. But we also know at three o'clock, you can pull in a park anywhere you want there, right? So in the grand scheme of things, that's effective parking. If all your parking spaces are full, 80% of the time, it is deemed to be effectively properly used parking. And, you know, for, for a village and for a town, I also added them up. Public on-street parking, 69 parking spaces were on average available. And by the way, this isn't for the whole town. This is just for these lots I showed. So I'm not worried about the stuff down by the Charles. And, and let's assume that, you know, down by Old Town here, those street parking, I'm not counting that. Uh, I will include these 11, but we can remove those. I don't need these parking spaces. Um, we, there's, there's really hundreds of spaces that are sitting open every day down there. And I think what we really have, and if we really want to be honest about it, and as a resident of this town who was down there all the time, I think we have a perception of a parking problem. I think we need to work together, public, private, 
you know, religious organizations, everyone to, you know, come up with a way to maximize the effectiveness of the village. And not everyone's going to love it, but we have the land and we have the parking. Um, what we don't want to do is add more parking. If there is a pinch on parking, who gets hurt is my question. I would suspect the person that gets hurt is the business owner. And in this case, um, that's me. So I'm pretty confident that my customers are going to take the bus, which you see is right in front of me, or park their bikes, which are going to be on the bike racks on my property, or use the electric e-scooters, the Lime scooter, I mean, not Lime scooters, these, um, dang it, not, now I said Lime, I won't, but the new e-scooters in Hartford that you can come down here. As we expand multi multimodal aspects of transportation, it makes it all easier. You know, and, and if people start talking about dr the way people drive, you know, I agree, but I would suspect the biggest issue is probably folks on their way to the DMV and not likely folks who live in the village or who are trying to grab a cup of coffee um, at drum roll, excuse me, from dr a bag of coffee from drum roll, because I guess they can't have cups um, or or, a, a, you know, a sandwich from heirloom markets. Um, let me pick up the pace here. Sorry. But as you can see, I want to look at what was available. If you take the 165 on private off street, if you take the 102 public off street, the 69 available public on street, cut those in half. I mean, cut those in quarter. There's still lots of spaces. How many of those spaces have been filled recently? I dare say it's not as bad as, as some people's anecdotal stories have said. Um, here's the data that comes with it. I mean, I pulled this right off the parking study. This None of this is original. It's just stated in ways for you to see it. And I did identify, um, you know, I have these, all these other zones, so you can see how the Garden Street was used before the restaurant opened. You can see the parking spaces um, where they peaked. Uh, the highest peak parking for everything was they noted was on Columbus Day weekend, which I think we can understand is an anomaly. Um, all told, there um, was a huge amount of parking spaces in the village. What I'm seeking to do is going to end up needing a grand total of 47 spaces. My basement has uh, access for as many as 12 occupants. Um, I don't know if I'll ever have 12 occupants in the basement, but that's a kitchen and a brewing area. Probably no more than two or three people in the brewing area at a time and the kitchen staff, who knows, right? Um, tasting room seats, I have 84 seats. I got 20 bar seats. And, um, you know, that ends up, uh, with my employees in the tasting room to 47 total uh, required parking. And oh, I hope I did that right. Sorry, I was supposed to say that here. The key thing of what I have is that Heart Seed has been uh, gracious enough to allow me to identify their parking lot as where my customers should park. I'll be encouraging everyone to park there all the time. And People at breweries actually wait in line. It's not like when you guys used to go to bars. Um, when I go, when I went to a bar as a 21 year old, you'd have to fight to get your your drink. You know, you'd be four deep and it'd be thick with smoke. But that's just me dating myself. Uh, nowadays, you go to a brewery and everyone waits in a line to get their beer. We, the culture of these establishments has changed. The the younger generation wants what they want, but they want it in a chill way. They want to be able to get their beer brought up to them after they ordered it on an app on their phone. Okay, these same folks are more than happy to walk an eighth of a mile. And I'm just going to scroll back up here for a minute. That circle is an eighth of a mile. Within an eighth of a mile of my property, you've got hundreds and hundreds of parking spaces of which I'll have 33 allocated plus countless street parking spaces that all of my customers will be able to use. Um, Keeney lot will be highly encouraged as well. And depending on what happens with the fire station lot, I will also let folks in, they can go there. But the key thing is, is this is a village. You know, what I really want, I want somebody to go eat at the Charles and uh, I want them to come and have a beer with me later. Um, I want my customers to go get ice cream before they go home. You know, I want my customers to uh, sit and have a couple beers while they wait for their pizza from Village Pizza. The whole concept of a village is so that we create efficiency through density. And, you know, we choose the level of density. In Weathersfield, we're not talking about building a new building here. We're talking about just reactivating one. So I hope you all take that into consideration. Um, 
but yeah, so, you know, back to where I'm at with the 33 spaces from heart seat, nine spaces. Oh, I, I didn't mention that. My apologies. Six spaces I intend to build on site. And um, the key thing is, is back in 2013, this property has the deeded um, variance for nine spaces that came about of an office residential proposal that was approved by zoning at the time. And they um, effectively shaved 10 spaces off their requirement. So I, I'm because of the, the calculation I thought was actually in, inaccurate. It was 9.2 spaces. I don't want to be a be greedy, but I'll, I'll take those nine spaces and call it 48. And if I have 48 spaces, I don't need to ask for anything else. I don't believe. Um, and I don't, I mean, I'm open to the conversation, but I've done all I can. I think I'm probably the first applicant ever to make a deal with another property owner in town, especially for 33 spaces. And I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to, you know, hold harmless agreement. Um, if I need to put up security cameras on their property and pay for that, I will, because as a business owner, I just want us all to be able to, to work together and it, it behooves all of us. So, you know, um, I, I need 47 spaces and as far as best I can tell, I have 48. So I'm hoping that parking isn't what we end up spending the whole time talking about here. Uh, but I'm open to it. So that said, um, I wanted to hit the parking thing early, tell you a little bit what I was doing. Um, but just for the final bit of clarity about what I'm doing is, you know, I think most folks have been into it. It's a it's a casual you know tavern feel it's a brewery it's a little bit of no frills that's what the customers want um i serve my beer i will have a full liquor license that i'll be applying for because uh, a lot of folks that come to have beer have friends who are, are don't like beer and i want to be able to pour a glass of wine to somebody who hates beer because i don't think i should make them drink a really sweet beer because i think that's my you know it's um, personal preference there. A lot of bars have um, full liquor license um, currently. So a lot of breweries do. Uh, so in addition to, you know, that, you know, brewing some beer in the basement, eventually I'd like to have a kitchen down there that's partially on the drawings due to the COVID rules. Um, if I don't need to have a kitchen, I can operate well without it. I'd be happy to have the, the folks from Luna Pizza deliver to me and, and the folks from Village walk it over. I mean, I, I have a, a bit of an, a verbal agreement with the folks at um, Grange Fresh to operate a deli out of my basement uh, if necessary, because I, I'm not a restaurateur per se, but I also just really need to focus on the aspects of, of my business I am an expert at to start with, and then I can grow into the building. Um, I, I bid off a lot with this building as being vacant for 25 years. It's, it's, this is no small thing, but um, you know what? Uh, I think it's viable and I, and I hope you guys do too. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been vacant for 25 years. Um, if you've got a better idea, you should have put your money up, but I guess I'm the guy trying to do it. And I, I'd love to find out how I can do my best to serve all of you as citizens in town and um you know have at it so that's all i have um i think we have some specifics that joe wren my engineer might want to go over site plan wise um and my architect well actually joe are you gonna go yeah joe's going <clears throat> yes uh can everyone hear me okay yep yep okay great um uh, for the record, Joe Wren, I'm a professional engineer. I own uh, a company named Indigo. Uh, we're based out of Old Saybrook, uh, 40 Elm Street. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we worked with uh, Micah uh, to develop this site plan uh, that was based off of a 2013 approval uh, that had a garage and it was turning the structure into residential uh, that never moved forward. Um, but this, the site plan is uh, similar um, in that we're uh, developing the western side of the building uh, with a parking area. Um, they also had an extension of the building, which is not um, part of this proposal at this time. There's no, no addition of the building. It's just a, a parking area. So um, before I get into any details, I know that it's 10 o'clock. I know that everybody is probably getting tired. 
Um, and I think Micah did a wonderful job at describing the history and, and the basics of what he is requesting with a special permit. Um, <clears throat> your town engineer did a very thorough review of the site. And uh, this afternoon we sent him, uh, we got his comments on Friday. We sent him responses today after we um, reviewed them yesterday sent them back uh, responses and an updated site plan. Uh, the site plan that I have up right now is the updated one. I did email this uh, to Peter also uh, later this afternoon. So he has this, the updated architecturals and the responses to the engineering comments. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna go through the engineering comments one by one because there were 39 of them, but the majority, 38 of them or 37 of them were very trivial. They're basically just uh, plan notes and labeling and uh, correction of some quantities and so forth. Um, <clears throat> really not much that, that PNC needs to get into because the engineer already did that review. But what I will do is just go through the site plan very quickly, uh, show you, just go around the building, show you what is being proposed so you have a good understanding of that. Um, and then uh, answer any questions that you may have. And then just ask, you know, really if there are any questions from the engineer comments uh, later on without going through all them, I can mention a couple of the, the more major items uh, if you wish, um, and then answer any questions you may have. So. <clears throat> Beginning on uh, the northeast corner of the building, we have the property lines, of course. Um, we have Church Street, we have Main Street, we have Sidewalk, um, a couple, couple of large trees that are remaining as is. Uh, up on the northeast corner of the building, uh, as with each of the four corners, uh, we were asked to uh, put, the dry, put the roof drains into dry wells. A uh, hundred years ago when the building was built, all the roof drains drained to the street drainage. Um, but to disconnect that so it's not a direct connection uh, to the stormwater runoff system, um, the town engineer asked us to put drywalls at each corner of the building, which we did, and then use those street connections just for overflow from the drywalls. Uh, also in the northeast corner, we've added a couple of bike racks. Um, Micah mentioned several um, times about multimodal transportation, including biking. So in that corner, there are a couple of uh, bike racks to hold uh, at least a dozen bikes or so. <clears throat> there is a new sidewalk uh, to a handicapped lift here. Um, Mark from Kemper Associates is on the call and he'll go through the building with you very quickly once I, uh, once I finish. Uh, the front stairwell is modified, renovated, slightly expanded, uh, some new handrails added and so forth. Um, with that expanded stairwell, there's um, some expanded uh, sidewalk and entry area. Uh, on that front side. Moving to the southeast corner, again, we have another dry well. Um, <clears throat> all outdoor uh, seating placed on the curtain, uh, the current lawn area. There's no surface being changed here, no stone, no pavers, nothing at this time, just uh, tables and seating on the, the current lawn area. Um, there is a uh, fence uh, that runs along the northern property line to split rail fence, varies in height on the north and south sides, runs along the eastern sidewalk and along the, the western, or excuse me, the southern sidewalk, uh, very similar to the previous application that was proposed, except this is a wooden split rail fence where the previous application that was approved had a, uh, a wrought iron um, fence with that application. Uh, moving to the south central side, again, we have another dry well. Um, <clears throat> there are a few stumps for trees that have been recently removed on town property and those will be ground flush uh, and removed to prevent any tripping hazards in that area. Uh, on the western side of the building, uh, you see we have a, uh, a new parking lot. Uh, on the original site plan that was submitted, that was to be paved. Uh, the town engineer had some concerns of stormwater runoff and water quality. and. Uh, so in talking to him, um, what Micah decided to do is in, invest uh, more into the property. And uh, instead of doing asphalt, uh, do turf stone pavers, uh, which we provided some details to the town engineer. You may have seen them. They're concrete pavers that are commercial and okay for traffic loading. Um, and they have uh, openings in them that you can either backfill with like a sand or a pea stone or uh, grass and grass could go grow through in the voids. They have a 60-40 open ratio, so that 40% remains 
open uh, for infiltration into the soils below. Uh, town engineer was very happy with that. And because of that, um, he didn't require any stormwater calculations or um, any hydrodynamic separators for oil water separation because we're promoting that infiltration and uh, breaking up that direct connection of impervious areas. Uh, within the parking area, we have four spaces on the west side. Uh, you could zoom in a little bit just so you can see better. Uh, we have to obviously just to demonstrate the paver area versus like the paved apron with the solid gray. So four spaces on the west side, two on the north side. Um, this is the dead area between spaces, but there is a fenced in uh, trash enclosure, which we have provided details uh, on the second sheet of the, of the plans. And I could show you those in a, in a moment. It's a complete six foot high fenced enclosure, shadow box fencing and matching gates in the front, as you can see. Um, these lines here coming in from the street, uh, we showed that a uh, SU-30 box truck vehicle there, as Mike has said in his presentation, there are no semis, no 18 wheelers here, very small batches of grains, no pallets. Um, so SU-30, whether it's a, gar a trash truck or a box truck can uh, get into the site. Um, how if it pulls forward, it can back up, pull forward, back up and pull out straight again. So it doesn't have to back up into the site. Um, it can do all that maneuvering off of the roadway uh, and it doesn't have to back onto the street or back in from the street. Um, so all four uh, maneuvers in the public right of way. Um, <clears throat> in, the, uh, in these three corners, uh, we have three uh, proposed trees. Uh, at this time, they're little leaf lindens. Um, if there is another preferred type of tree, we can put that. We a lot, a lot of times do these around parking lots because they have uh, little leaves and they affect the parking lot, parking areas less and they require less maintenance and they're a really good uh, street tree and, uh, and parking lot tree. <clears throat> um, out in the front here, again, we have the paved apron. Uh, there is a portion of the sidewalk uh, that will be replaced and that's called out in this plan. We've included uh, on this plan, we've included the town details accordingly uh, for the concrete sidewalk. Uh, there is a catch basin, uh, an existing catch basin that lands in the driveway and per the town engineer, there's a requirement that a catch basin can't be in front of a new driveway. Uh, so on this plan, we show that catch basin shifted over. Uh, the flow goes to the west, uh, to the left on this plan. Um, so the idea would be to plug this existing pipe, which is an overflow to the sanitary system. Um, so that will be plugged on both ends. So there's no more overflow to sanitary. And this catch basin would essentially just be moved slightly to the west. Um, there's nothing else that connects into it. Um, so that, that wouldn't be a problem. It just gets it away from uh, the front of the proposed driveway. Can I can I ask a quick question? Are you are you removing that basin, or you're replacing it with a manhole? Um, at first, the engineer uh, mentioned replacing it with a manhole, but there's really no reason, and he agrees when I talked to him this morning that there's no reason to replace it with a manhole because the only thing that connects is this pipe that travels to the west. Um, this pipe here, this connection, that's the overflow you could see to the sanitary line. Um, and a sanitary manhole, and he wants that plugged on both ends anyways. So there's Perfect. no need to have a, another structure there. So that makes sense. be removed and relocated to the West. Understood, um, thank you. You're welcome. The other uh, thing that he asked us to do is look at sightline. Um, hey, as you all know, you're all familiar with the area and I could look on, anyone could look on Google Maps, you can see uh, seemingly forever looking to the west and the east. It's a straight alignment. There's not a lot of elevation change. The road streets are very wide. Uh, looking to the east, you have the, um, uh, the island at Maine and Church and, you know, with stop control and so forth. Looking to the west, he was more interested in um, just looking on, on Google Earth, for example, you could see five or six sets of utility poles. So clearly you could see five or 600 feet down the street. Um, but he wanted to know if there was a parked car uh, in this location uh, at the, on the side of the road, um, what the um, potential reduced sightline distance would be without a car coming out of the driveway, pulling, excuse me, all the way out into the street to see. So 
Um, what we did is right now there are not really delineated spaces. There is a shoulder line, but two cars generally can and do park here where this driveway is going. Obviously with the driveway there, they will not park in front of the driveway to block that. There is not adequate distance for a car uh, to park between the neighboring uh, residential driveway here to the west and our new uh, driveway apron. Um, so that would not be a viable parking space. If someone did, even though it's not striped for it, if someone did park to the west of that residential driveway, that's what we took into account. Uh, and we show that we achieve approximately a 300 foot sightline distance to the west and um, more than 600 feet looking to the east. <clears throat> uh, the road is posted for 25 miles per hour, so that's, that's more than um, AASHTO requires for safe sightline distances. Town engineer um, agrees with that? He does. I spoke to him today, and uh, this is what he asked for, for us to show these sight lines. Um, with a posted speed limit and so forth. And uh, yes, we didn't have this plan uh, ready when I spoke to he, uh, It's just that he uh, gets concerned with driveways now. And, yes. And any parking near them. Yes, so for new driveways, there are, there are several requirements that, that we found out about. And one is the catch basin in front of the driveway. So that's why that needs to move. And then he did say that uh, we have to show, you know, every applicant with a new driveway cut has to show uh, safe sight lines. Uh, and here we're blessed with a very straight street with not a lot of elevation change and it's very wide. Um, so you can see down the street east and west um, very clearly, which is, which is nice. Plus it's signed for 25 miles an hour, whether people drive that or not, but that's what it, that's what it's enforced at. Um, so, uh, we have, you know, slower speeds on straight wide roadways that we can see a lot. So at least we don't have a curve or a narrow street or something to contend with uh, in this location. Uh, one last thing related to the sight line. There is currently a sign uh, right at this location, uh, pretty much across from the front entry sidewalk that says no parking from here to the corner to the east uh, to the main intersection. Um, in talking with the town engineer, we thought it was a good idea to move that sign up to here so that no car parks in this location, hence blocking the sight line uh, coming out looking, uh, looking to the east. So that, that sign post per this updated plan would move uh, slightly to the west by the new parking area. So it would eliminate um, parking possibilities um, from there to the corner. And then there wouldn't be any parking between these two driveways. So any parking would be west of that residential driveway uh, away from the site itself. Why, why won't he allow uh, parking to the east at Broad Main Street? Um, right now, there is a sign right here. There's an existing sign um, that doesn't allow, you know, around the intersection, of course, for site distances and so forth, looking through um the intersection and seeing cars coming you know at you coming down main street either way uh so that sign is there and it's it's been there for some time um he doesn't want so so that already controls there to the east so now there's only one potential parking place in here so if someone did park west of that sign in between the driveway uh at this location uh, he feels that it would be an impediment to sightline view uh, and a safety concern. So hence you agree with him on that? And I don't mean to put you in the middle, but uh, that intersection has been redesigned in recent years, you know, the Main Street intersection. And uh, I just wondered if this was updated, this section. That's all. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, I don't the, know. Uh, the, That's the, the only reason I'm asking. Yeah, anytime a car is parked immediately adjacent to a driveway you're trying to leave, it, it is in your way. It is in your line. Yeah, state. that I understand. But I'm talking about the area, you know, toward Main Street, uh, you know, along here that has not, doesn't have parking now. Why? why you know? Um, generally, generally at intersections, there's a, there's a sight line triangle at all intersections. Yeah. Um, if I could. Actually, George, this is Micah. Um, 
if if you walk down there, it, you'll actually notice there is a bit of a narrowing as you get towards the intersection. I think the the road at some point widens there, and it's hard to see in this drawing because we don't show the other side of the street. Oh, okay. So that if you look now, the sign is currently where there's a bit of an adjustment in the curb that makes it a little bit wider for cars. I only know because I park right next to that sign as often as I can. Okay, so you you personally have evaluated it too. So okay, fine, that's good enough for me. I'm just asking some questions. That's all. We just listened to the town engineer on this one. I didn't get a voice. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes the town engineer can be right and wrong. I mean, come on. You guys aren't perfect. Give no, me a com perfect. no comment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not an engineer, but I believe in what you guys do to a degree. <laughs> okay, I'm done on that one. You All done right. with your presentation, sir? Or can we ask uh, questions or what? Nope, I just have a. Um, uh, so, yeah, that, that completes the site. I seem to have lost my screen share anyway. Um, so, on, in that regard, uh, that, that completes the site plan overview. Uh, I don't know what's going out this year's screen now. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention were the, uh, the comments. Uh, so the engineer has several comments, like I mentioned before, most of them are trivial and just uh, things to do with legends and quantities and labeling and so forth. Um, there, were, there was a large comment, number eight, about drainage. Um, and that was essentially taken uh, care of uh, with the, I'm going to try to stop sharing here and then reshare. Um, that was essentially taken care of with doing the pavers in the driveway rather than the asphalt. Um, That's so a good that was, idea. I like that. Yeah, seeing that done. Yeah, thank you. And um, it was a, I sent him information. He really liked the turf stone and he replied back to us with an email and said, yes, absolutely. That Number eight comment goes away. All those, it was A, B, C, and D parts of that number eight comment uh, because we have that, that pervious paver in the driveway. So that's something that Mike is willing, uh, willing to do. Um, the other uh, larger item was a sight line, which we just talked about uh, in depth. Uh, and then also disconnecting the direct connection of the roof runoff to the town system now. So we've added those four drywalls at the corners. Um, that essentially was, you know, the, the crux of the comments other than the uh, minor ones. Uh, we did get a uh, something from the fire marshal today and he has no outstanding comments. Uh, so we're pretty clean there. So unless there are no uh, further site related comments, uh, I have Mark take okay. over from Kemper and just go through the building quickly so we can get everyone out of here. No, I, I have a few for you or whoever it is that would okay. handle it. Sure. Uh, the fire marshal and you guys don't have any concern with the fire escape on the north side of the building, huh? What are you doing about it? Did you then try to explain it to me? Uh George, that yeah. we are we're not proposing any activation of the second floor. Oh, so then that can stay just the way it is. Correct. Uh, in fact, it's a it's purely a financial decision. There will be I'll eventually, I hope to be able to activate the second floor, but that will require you know some pretty significant changes um, to the fire code. And and honestly, I suspect that's why the Masons ultimately abandoned the building back in '97. Is the international fire code changed pretty significantly, which would have made it it cost prohibitive for them to do those renovations with their dwindling membership. Yep. I can understand that, and it's always been an issue of small one, but uh, one of significance, and it, it looks kind of stupid, that fire escape in this day and age. But hey, it's old weather seal. These are old items. Okay. Uh, the other thing I have is uh, the front steps are all taken care of with a ramp out there now, I mean, for handicapped access, you said, that north side of the steps as a handicap access? Uh, well, I think that's the section. We haven't um, gone over the building itself yet. And I, I'm pretty sure that's being addressed. But to, I mean, I don't want to steal any thunder. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You want, no. I'm, go ahead, guys. Then I'll ask these questions later. Oh, okay. 
right. I've got one question for the engineer before he goes, which is on, I couldn't tell from the site plan, but are are there several picnic tables and regular tables that are outside of the property line into the town right of way? Uh, there, there are. Micah might be able to add more than I can about that. But yes, there are uh, tables and fencing uh, that extend onto the public right of way. Yes. I guess maybe Peter is that. Is that something that can be done with certain approvals or agreements or, or how does that work? Uh, at this point, there is no agreement. I understand that Micah has made some efforts to reach out to the uh, town manager uh, unsuccessfully. So uh, at this point, that is an unresolved issue. Uh, it was also one of my comments, as you probably saw in my email. So that um, whether that's an agreement, whether that's a license, uh, I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know if the manager, you know, ran that up the flagpole with the mayor or the town attorney. So that is something that is still um, up in the air. Are there any other restaurants with outdoor dining on town property in Old Weathersfield or anywhere? In we have we have sidewalk parking, um, for example, Village, you know, Aroma Bistro, um, that kind of thing. Uh, we do not have something like this. Um, so it's unusual in, in, in that respect. So it's not on a, and there's, there's obviously um, alcohol involved. So um, hmm. it, it definitely has to get resolved um, sooner than later. And I, I'm not sure that legally you guys can condition your approval on, you know, a third entity. So it's certainly something we need to talk about. And on the yes. parking plan that they've got for the parking lot that they propose building, uh, do we have, do the zoning regs allow a parking lot to extend into required yard set. They they received a variance for that parking lot location um, years ago. Yeah, that was also noted in my uh, comment. So you're talking about the parking lot on the Church, Church Street side, yes, yeah. So there were the almost all of the previous proposals for this property uh, had parking there. Some had also had garages, and all of those uh, are in the yards and did get uh, variances historically. Okay, and does that include the one that the applicant referenced for the nine or eight parking spaces? I guess was that those variances? Uh, there were multiple variances, so I, I don't so don't quote yeah, me on which I, one which one that was. But I think I hate to say how long I've been around, but I think I probably was on all of them, but I don't remember the <laughs> right. point. Um, right. So okay. Well, let's Thank hope you. this one actually happens. All right. Uh, or hey, Joe, something. Joe, that's all right. This is George. Because I've been around longer than you. Yes, you. This yes, you have. Always bothered me this stuff, <laughs> particularly why the town isn't getting compensated in this case for the town property being used for the restaurant. My understanding is that that is a possibility. By the way, um, all I can do is ask the town for uh, what conditions the town has for me to be able to use the space. Um, because the other option is that I will continue to mow that grass and I'll send the bill to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and when one of my council members shows up on my front porch for the campaign this fall, I may ask him this question. Yeah. So they better be ready for it. No, I, I spoke to the mayor at an event and asked him if he would, uh, you know, take the time to, you know, talk to the town manager about it. Because I honestly, I don't know the entire process because like, like, um, like uh, Peter said, it, it's it's kind okay. of a new thing, but um, you know I'm happy to do what it takes. I'm going to be mowing that grass. I thought I might as well include it in my fenced area. Therefore, I control what happens inside my patio space. I'm legally responsible for what happens on that town apron. Uh, you guys are held responsible for. So I can change my fencing. I can have a smaller patio. That those are all options. That's not a big deal for me. But I also thought, why not actually fence it? because all prior applicants did ask for a fence right up against the sidewalk and were granted it. The difference is that I intend to use that for business purposes. So absolutely, I'm open to uh, hold harmless agreement, compensation, what, you know, I'm obviously gonna maintain it. Um, it's, it's the center of town. It's, there's a wider, there's a wider um, town envelope at that intersection than any other in the area because the nature of the roads so yeah, I'm, I'm very much open to that, but all I can do is propose and send out the emails as I'm told. I've, I've not received any response from the town after a few phone calls and a couple emails other than Peter getting back to me and saying, send it again, which I've done. 
So Peter's been a great help there, but I've not heard from the town manager. Peter, tell the town, the, the temporary town manager or whether, you know, and uh, I think my relationship with her is okay. Tell her I'm concerned about this, okay? And I imagine Joe is too, perhaps. Consider it done, George. Thank you. Yeah, this is Joe Wren, uh, just one second. And talking to the town engineer too, he, he will um, require, and he had us add a note to the site plan regarding indemn uh, indemnification and hold harmless agreement for all improvements within the town right away. Uh, including the fencing and part of the paver, um, part of the paver driveway that ends up on the north side of the sidewalk in the town right away as well. Um, so all of that, there is a note on the updated site plan uh, related uh, to that. So that's something that Micah will have to secure. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a quick question on the site plan before we leave it. This is Pete. Yep. The, uh, the outdoor dining is on grass. If I understood correctly, right? Yes. Uh, I'm just curious, why not go the extra step and put something more durable? I can imagine that, you know, with all the traffic you guys will have out there, I mean, I hope you're successful and all the people you'll have, that, that grass will turn into mud and with no time. Have you thought through that a little uh, bit? I've absolutely thought through it and you nailed it right there on the head. Um, the process of taking a building that's been vacant for 25 years and activating it is, is no small feat. Otherwise, it would have been done successfully by any of the other folks who came in front of Joe and, and showed you know what they were going to do, right? So what I'm trying to do here is to a degree, um, you know, just give me a shot. Let me, let me get open because with the revenue that I make during the first season on a grass patio, you're darn right I'm gonna put a hardscape in. And after two years of having a split rail fence, you're darn right I'm gonna put in a wrought iron fence, even though split rail is the historically accurate fence of the location. Um, you know, I, like I said, I live here in town and I have for 12 years. I, I, I want it to be fantastic, but the cost to do what you're saying is I think a lot more than, than you might imagine until you actually start pricing it out. Because when you do a hardscape, now you're talking about drainage. And as you can see, even though my building is owned by Roger Tabshay, the principal of uh, general paving, I'm now not gonna be allowed to use blacktop for my driveway. So I'm increasing my cost right there to satisfy the drainage issues. So I, all I ask is that you folks, as you watch this, understand that my intents are to, in the next five years, turn this into something you can all be proud of. Because I don't think anyone here is proud of what's been there for the last 25 years. All right, well, you've thought about it and uh, it's fair enough, it makes sense. Keeps me up at night. Oh, okay. Uh, one yeah. last question, the trees that are there, are you gonna keep them or are you gonna? Just like the other trees that have been removed on the property, that property, has zero trees growing on it. The town owes every single one of those trees. All the trees that have been removed have been removed by the town. I will never cut down one of those trees. Okay, great. But the town might, and that's something you might want to address to Public Works, because right. they took the other three down. Okay. I don't know if I can go forward and show you the building changes. Please. Okay. Um, let's see if I can share the screen here. You're familiar with the outside of the building. Here's the main street uh, view of the building. Um, we're looking to do very little changes to the appearance of the outside of the building. The front porch has to be change to get the handicap lift and bring the patio up to the level of the first floor. Uh, we're going to adjust the overhang to go over the new lift. Um, so basically it's a new front porch going to be built. The idea is to trim it out and have the height that's existing, reuse the columns and the rail as much as we can uh, that's existing, add a new handrail in the middle. Um, that's, that's the changes to the east elevation. The 
North elevation, really no changes. Here's the handicap lift that's going in the front. The west elevation, we want to add a new entryway to the basement so the basement can serve the patio area. And the south elevation, the idea is to renovate these stairs. They're in poor condition, so fix the concrete there, add new um, guards and handrails there. Um, so really the, the exterior changes are very minimal and the idea is to keep the building as it is. Um, the interior changes really, here's just detail of the porch detail. And again, the idea is to keep, keep what you have, just this will get a little wider to include the handicap lift. Micah touched on the first floor. Um, it's right now a big open space. Uh, we're gonna add bathrooms for men and women in the back part. This is the existing stair. This is the existing stair we're gonna renovate. Um, the rest of the area is going to be bar service with 20 counter seats. And we're doing like 84 table seats um, and a sitting area here. Um, the, you know, this is the front porch, which is gonna get wider with the handicap lift and new handrails on the porch. <coughs> and like I said, this is the new entrance exit from the basement area to the patio area. The second floor, we're not proposing uh, any changes really at this point. We just wanna enclose the stair and uh, this will be a future assembly uh, area and hopefully uh, add some bathrooms up there, single use bathrooms up there. The basement is going to have a new kitchen area as Micah touched on and really a new brewery area. And again, here's that exit from the basement and new foundation for the front porch. Fairly simple architectural changes. Here's the existing building as is. Now, if there's any questions on that, uh, I could answer for you. One simple question. Um, you're not pulling a new sprinkler system in according to the original notes, correct? Correct, no sprinkler. The occupancy we wanna keep uh, below 300. The, really for this, uh, it's 179 people. Okay, just asking and keep the fire area really just to the first floor and, and second floor, that's part of enclosing the stair. So that you fire think it should have a sprinkler system, Tony? There's no current sprinkler system. Oh, okay. Well, it'll, it'll help you if you, when you replace the fire escape. Oh, okay. inadequate. Right. Yeah, when he, when we expands to the second floor, that will have to be addressed. I'm just curious, you mentioned the second floor and Mike also talked about it as a future assembly area. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, kind of you know, vague. What, what do you mean by a future assembly area? What, what would that space be used for? What, what, well, what you're thinking? It, we're not at all, we're proposing that we don't, don't use that space at this time. And for, I mean, I'm happy to answer the question but really for the sake of this meeting, it's not even on the table, right? Well, um, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So in, in, that, in that case though, um, the way I envision it is this, uh, first and foremost, the Mason, the local ch uh, chapter of the Masonic order will start meeting in there again. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna invite them in to use the space. I'll use it for a lot of community uses. Um, as a random aside, uh, my father became an author after he retired from teaching. Uh, he get, got paid to go and do a speech down at the uh, Mystic Seaport where you can put up slides on the screen and you can do things like that. Um, on, a, on a night when some big event's happening, uh, let's say like UConn is in the Final Four, I can actually put some sports on upstairs and people can watch it and not interrupt the, the primary goal of my business, which is, is to introduce people to my beer and have them try something new and you know that whole process so i don't i'm not a sports bar but you know when yukon's in the final four everywhere is a sports bar so upstairs with you um i got one of the folks who um lives in the neighborhood she wants to use it for her having her crochet circle 
they meet up at a house. Well, now they can meet up here, have a glass of wine, um, and have more room. So uh, it'll be all. It'll be basically where all my programming happens. If I have live music, it will be there. I talk to a local um, theater company, and I'll offer it to them as practice space. And you're wondering, what do I get from this? If 15 people show up to theater practice on a Tuesday night, three of them will order a glass of beer. And that is all I care about. Okay. So for purposes of tonight, yeah. So, so for purposes of the application before us, there is no use proposed for the second floor and that any proposed use of the second floor will have to come back for further approval. Yes, it was recommended that we don't do that at this time because um, let's put it this way. This building's been vacant for 25 years. We don't know what the impact of this building on the village. And while we were able to secure uh, an appropriate amount of parking, um, we don't know what that looks like when we include the upstairs. So it's best for us to be able to open and see what happens. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable to, to take a measured approach and, and also the cost of um, bringing it up to fire code is pretty significant and I'm not with all the additional other things I've had to do like for the engineer such as upgrading the driveway I, I honestly I don't believe I'll be able to afford that okay yeah I, I, I just wanted to be clear that you know for for present purposes there is no use proposed for the second yeah. floor if you, all the stuff that is dotted lines which is almost everything on the interior of this page is not happening. The solid lines, which is the fire door at the top of the stairs, that's it. Okay. Thank you. All right, Jack, did you have anything further? Mark. Yep. He's talking to you. Your name says Jack. Your kid must have oh, been. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. This <laughs> <laughs> is son probably young. <laughs> I'm on Jack. My Jack Kemper's the uh, principal here. I'm on his computer. Oh, his. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. So I'm sorry about that. I, I tried to change it to Mark and I couldn't do it. Um, so I, I do not have anything further. Architecturally, it's, it, you know, it's fairly simple. Okay, thanks. Does anybody uh, on the commission have any questions for the architect or the engineer? Oh, yes, Mr. Chairman. What, uh, yes, the please. angled spaces to be added out front, I hear no mention of it tonight by the town or the applicant. Are they needed this time around or not? Mike, you probably want to. Or did he make try to make a case that we did he didn't need those or he wasn't proposing those because he has enough access to parking for this particular use? Right. So what? Yeah, right. I, I think that's that's ba that's my basic statement. Uh, but that said, through our conversation with the town engineer, uh, you know, I'd be more than happy to we'll say repaint uh, one of the existing spaces on Main Street to be a handicapped accessible spa space, but um, as, a, as a private person, if, if you're gonna ask me to repave Main Street um, and add parking, I, I think that that's a non-starter for this project. Okay, uh, uh, we might wanna vi visit that if you do the next up, upper floor. Okay? Absolutely. Uh, and I would I would also ask if I if if we're going to I mean, I agree with you when we address the parking for the upper floor, it's certainly a whole nother can of worms. Right. Uh, okay. But but in the interim, if we do manage to get something going here with the with the potential infrastructure funds coming from the federal government, it just is this is an aside based on listening to the prior applicant as well. We may want to look at ways that we can leverage the federal funding that's likely going to become available to really um, work to resolve a lot of these issues for the entire district, because it isn't, uh, it isn't one property that is the issue. I mean, like I said, when this was operating as Masonic Temple, in theory, based on fire code and parking code and what have you from the day, it had 150 spaces. 
And so where did they go? They got picked up by this business here and that business there. And and when we look at it, there really should be a district plan. And, and I would love to help participate um, through through, you know, civic activity as a resident anyway, you know. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to hear from my fellow commissioners right now about how they might feel about those additional parking spaces out on Main Street now or in the future or whatever they think. Anyone yeah. care to comment on it? Okay. Hey, I mean, if, hey, you're asking, if you're asking, if you're asking me, like, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to have the screen sharing stop so I could see who's still here. George, this is Pete. As an historical question, wasn't there angled parking in front of that building years ago? And then they you know, I don't think so. But I, not, not, well, I've been around, but hey, it could have been, I suppose. I, I thought there was angled parking there, and then when they reconfigured you know, the four-way there, they filled it in. That's what I remember. No, no when, it, it, it would have been. No. no, it would no, have been long no. before that. Would have been long before that. All right, I, I thought there was, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. All right, well, there goes the screen share. All right. <clears throat> Uh, any of the other members of the commission have questions for the applicant or the engineer or the architect? I have a, a, a few for the applicant, Rich. Things I, I you know, I've sure. read the, I read your memo. I read the application. Um, although I will say we've had a lot of reading for tonight's meeting more than you. <laughs> Hope I'm not confusing. Yeah. Applications, <laughs> but just a few things that were not um, jumping out at me. One was I didn't see, and maybe I missed it, anything about the hours of operation that are being proposed. Yeah, that I sent in the statement of use as requested. Um, typically, uh, it, it'll be standard uh, brewery hours, which typically run from like 10 a.m. to I, I wrote 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, staff might be there a little later uh, or a little earlier, um, certainly earlier because in brewing, we often will get started, you know, eight o'clock or whatever. We have deliveries coming in sometimes seven. Um, I did talk to my neighbor, Paul, who I'm sure he'll probably, I hope, hope he's still awake, but um, he'll probably speak, um, you know, some things like that. We're not, we're not going to let the trash guy come at four in the morning and I won't let, you know, somebody go into work at four in the morning and start making noise. I don't want that. But um yeah, we'll probably have somebody on site by eight o'clock most days and the actual hours of service, I expect to have it closed by 10. But um, unless there's a special event, which I believe I have to file a permit with the town if I have like somebody's birthday party or something, I don't know. At seven days a week, those hours? I probably won't be, but that's what I'm asking for. Honestly, as I saw living here, I, every time I go down to the village on Monday, I'm always frustrated because I can't get anything. And what I've gone down there so many times on a Monday since <coughs> involved with this property in March and seen people walking all over the place. And I've, I've had conversations with them. I, I mean, I literally engage them because I'm like looking into the property. I want to know what it's going to my business is going to be like. And so I think I'm going to try to do Mondays, but it, it may not stick. You know, it, it's that simple. It, nobody else is open Mondays, but somebody should be. So in terms of the outdoor tables that you're proposing with that. Would those hours be the same as the indoor hours in terms of the cutoff at night, for example? Yeah, I don't see. I don't see why they would be any different. Um, I suspect uh, that you know there are some certain restrictions at like this time of year. Um, it's too damn cold outside at night, so <laughs> <laughs> you know. I mean, it it is what it is. I, I think. Um, I could take my lead from what they do over at Lucky Lose, but I don't ever see folks over there too late at night, except for in the very middle of summer, right? All right. Yeah. Another uh, question. When you, earlier on, when you oh. were showing the um, indoor layout, I think you were looking at, you, you started to get, I think you showed a seating chart at one point, and then you were showing building code allowed or fire code capacity, but do you anticipate, I know, I think it's, 
I think you're proposing 104 actual seats inside. Um, at least that's in Peter's memo. And I guess the question for you is for your type of business, do you anticipate to have people standing, you know, in addition to yep. those seated around the bar, you know, around the tables? And and if so, you know, what what do you think the overall number of people could be, you know, at a peak time inside? Well, considering this is this is you're asking the this the proverbial sixty four thousand dollar question you're asking me how successful i think my business is going to be and and that's a tough one right so what i can do is i can plan for what i know um i plan for that 104 seats because it's what fits um during the planning process because um covid has been in effect uh, everything is designed so that uh, were another pandemic to come around, my seating would remain at 104, okay? So what that means is I have a lot of air space. Nobody's gonna be crowded in there, right? Um, that means there's room for people to stand. I can't determine whether somebody prefers to stand or sit. Uh, I don't know about you, but like a lot of times after sitting in an office all day when I used to have a corporate job, I would always just stand at the bar because I needed to stand. So uh, that's a great question, but at the same time for every person that's just standing, is there an empty stool? I think you'll see a lot of times there is. Um, the capacity is what it is. I mean, that's all I can say, like any other business owner um, at, at, at um, you know, Linochi's, how many people are standing, <coughs> how many people are sitting at Lucky Lou's, how many, we, we don't know, I, I, what, I, you know. What, what would be the maximum allowed capacity? Well, that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, that was shared, that was, um, 170 guess, something yeah it's like 178 is uh, i didn't realize that what you were asking i'm sorry i thought you were asking a, a gut feeling but yeah 178 is my maximum so yeah you can't exceed that by fire code in other words yes the yeah, fire marshal could kick my butt that's based in, in, on the area of the space okay in terms of the heart seed lot and the 33 spaces where where exactly are you at this point in your negotiations with them do you have a signed agreement already we don't have a signed agreement they're waiting on their insurance uh, unless they sent some to you peter um but we're waiting they're in they're in the process of re their annual insurance review and audit which you know as as if, if you know that the audit can be a pain um they're in the process <laughs> of that and so they're getting the guidance from their insurance folks i've already put him in contact with mine we, we are we're in agreement in principle what they're not picking up any additional cost i am picking up any additional cost i'm policing the area if they need additional security i'm covering i'm covering everything so and are you are you are you getting the use of those spaces you know seven days a week when whenever uh, you, seven days dedicated. a week yeah 5 p.m after 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 hours for them and they're and he they they've always for the last however many 40 odd years i, I forgot how many years he said they've been a strict nine to five business you know but it's actually those, not, it's like eight to four something actually, but not nine to five. Yeah. And those 33 spaces would only be for your use, your employees or your customers. Um, I mean, I don't know how I would police that, but yes. Okay. And, and uh, how, how would it work in terms of for what term or period of time would you be agreeing? You know, would you have the right to those spaces for, is it a year? Is it multiple years you, you i'm know. open to a suggestion um i we hadn't reached a, a number of years i i suspect we'll have an um if i were to guess it will probably be an annual agreement uh with a minimum uh cancellation time frame so that allows me to figure out a solution or determine where we're at uh, because that's just that's, that's pretty standard in an agreement like that um, so I think we'll probably, you know, um, make an agreement that is for a certain number of years, but then have renewals as, as with any agreement. In, in your application, I think you said there'd be a total of 18 employees, I forget, six at the bar, 12 um, others, I think. Maximum capacity for employees. That doesn't mean I'm going to have that many, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, what, what would be the most there at one single That's time? I put 18 on there because that's the maximum and that's the amount of parking I'm allocating for. So I don't, I mean, it may be 18. I, I just can't, I can't guess that because right. like I said, if somebody, if somebody's going to host a, a birthday party and it, well, you know what, it's, let's take it this way. Um, tree lighting. So uh, if, if you don't know, I've been, I've been the guy running the beer tent at the tree lighting um, 
in the in the village every year. For, well, while we've had it the last year, I guess we didn't. But um, and so you know we have seven thousand people down there, and it's just a madhouse, and people park <laughs> in front of driveways. They park everywhere. So I'm suspecting on a night like that, I'll probably be hopping busy. And if I have 18 people that are willing to come in and work for me, I'll have them. If I have 24 people that are willing to come in and work for me, I probably have them, but I probably got eight of them over at the beer tent at the barn where I'm raising money, you know, and I'll probably have the rest at my business serving paid customers, right? So your... where are they parking for that? Same place everyone else is for the tree lighting ceremony, which is probably as far away as uh the old auction hall unless they you know develop it but, but for normal times are you going to require all of your employees to park at the heart seed lot is that oh, absolutely uh my re my suggestion is to have them park on my property uh and here's why when i have a you know for whatever it's worth with a um if i have a i'll have them park down there i have no problem with that uh, I certainly I will not allow them to park in public parking. That's that's going to be my one rule. The reason I think they should park in my back lot is because we have six spaces drawn on there. That's six spaces as per standard American parking code derived through a national international consortium. That is not how people who work together park. We block each other in and we have room. We will fit 10 cars in there because you know who's leaving first. And that's I mean, I hate to say it. We're talking reality. I can fit more of my staff cars in there than you could ever fit customers. You don't want customers coming and going out of there. You don't want doors opening, closing all night. You want people to drive in, park one time, and go to work until 10 o'clock at night and then leave in an orderly fashion. And honestly, I, I guess that might be even what my neighbor would like. But I'm I'm open to whatever. I, I personally just my only rules, I know they will not be parking on the street, unlike a lot of other businesses. And and I will enforce that through the strictest of rules um as a village as, as a guy who lives here like it's rude and insulting to have your staff park where you want your customers that's not what we're in business for and like i said if we don't have enough parking it's my business that suffers right um i purposely didn't locate this business in downtown hartford because the lack of perceived parking even though there's just a gobs of it uh but that lack of i guess free parking um, keeps people out of there on the weekends. And so I would never have a customer on the weekend. And I don't want that. So this is why I'm here in Wethersfield, the town I live in, right? Um, so, you know, that's my best answer. And it's honestly, it, it may not be the right legal answer, but it's the correct, it's the God's honest truth. Uh, I would prefer to have my staff park there because we would actually fit more than six cars there. What What are you envisioning in terms of, you mentioned, you know, the possibility music outside what are you what are you envisioning are you envisioning uh, live or recorded or oh god no not recorded no uh sorry <laughs> i apologize um the only music i'll ever have is live music um yeah, certainly i said my thought process is is i had to make a decision of whether i would ask for it to ever exist on my property so given that as a question i included it do i have plans for it no uh what do i envision it as Honestly, acoustic only outside. Um, I love live music. Doesn't mean everyone does, right? Uh, my true vision is that if I were to have live music, it should be inside. I don't have a good place for it on the ground floor. I don't really foresee doing a hell of a lot of live music. Uh, whoops, sorry. Heck of a lot of live music until I have an upstairs that's viable. And even then, I don't know how it deals with sound. <laughs> and so I don't want to, like, if I start pissing off my neighbor, I'm going to have a hard time with my business. And so my whole goal is to run a business the best I can while keeping all my neighbors happy. Because, you know, if I get complaints, I'm going to have the cops there. I'm going to have the fire marshal there. You know what I'm saying? Can I, one last question for you for, for now. Um, in terms of the outdoor, proposed outdoor dining component, um, again, I think we have a lot of, you know, we have, we have to look at all the potential impacts to the area, but in terms of the outdoor component, you know, do you have some flexibility in terms of the number of seats, you know, or, or, or put another way, um, you know, would you consider reducing um, the number of seats that you're proposing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think when you mentioned the fence location, I can go either way, you know, propose what you want, right? I mean, that's my job is to bring to you what I want. My vision is truly to occupy the, every little bit of grass that's there, but 
part of the reason is a lot of that, some of that grass that is there is town land, right? But I'm the guy maintaining it, right? Like it or not, me as, 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 the, as the owner of the property, uh, I'm, I'm in contract, I'm not currently the owner, but I'm in contract to purchase it. As the, as the de facto owner of the property, I'm the guy out there mowing the lawn, right? So if I'm mowing the lawn and if somebody breaks their ankle, I'm liable for that, even though, because, you know, I, even though I'm the one taking care of it, I might as well include it in my fence and include it in my patio where I can control every aspect of it, keep kids outside of it, because again, it's a bar, right? And, and control my environment. That said, I'm open to anything, right? Um, because as I asked of you, give me a chance, let me open, let me build the vision out, right? The patio, it, it holds a lot easier if I only do it once. It's a lot harder if I have to extend the fence in six months when the town does come with an agreement. I don't know. I mean, I'm open to whatever you guys want to do, but I haven't heard back from the town as a, as a recommendation. Right. And I guess I'm even speaking beyond, you know, whether the town allows, I don't know how many seats are affected by whether the town allows that or not as you know whether it's 20 or yeah. 25 or whatever but you know even beyond that i guess i'm just also posing the question of whether you'd consider a less intense use of the outdoor space um again if that's something that the commission is is interested in i would prefer not to because that's you know if you start to think about it 99 percent of the time it's going to be largely empty or quiet uh, if you think if every time you drive by Lucky Lou's, how often is it packed? Not often, frankly. It, what happens when you have a larger space like that is it allows you to capture the income on the days when it's available. What it doesn't do is guarantee a constant volume of persons, right? So if I were to really talk about like the mathematical equation that represents square footage and seats to income, there's probably a sweet spot somewhere around 37 seats outside that would represent the least amount of space to make a decent amount of income, right? But as you start to scale up, it allows me to actually make the income that's going to allow me to, to properly restore the second floor of that building to look like it did when the Masons met there. And it'll allow me to put five levels of scaffolding up for when I want to paint the soffits, which are complicated, and even though it's only two floors, they're 40 some odd feet up. Do you know what I mean? Like, so this building, I, I, I mean, I, this building is uh, overstated, and therefore its expenses are overstated, right? If you think about it just being a simple 2,800 square foot building, it's not. It's, it's a monster. And having a 14 foot ceiling requires an enormous HVAC system that's going to cost me an, an arm and a leg, you know, while at my house here, I have window units. <laughs> okay. Um, this, this is, uh, this is kind of the fundamental question is how offensive is it to have an extra 30 seats outside that look nice in a patio? You know, right now it's just a lawn. Four years ago, it was overgrown arborvitae and some trees. Um, I think there's a lot of potential to make it beautiful, but if you also were really take a scrutinous eye, stand, stand right there on the sidewalk and look at my building and imagine it filled with picnic tables and then turn around and look at the building across the street where you're looking directly at a parking lot and an empty brick wall and a dumpster. I don't think what I'm proposing is the, the greater problem. I think what I'm proposing is an activation solution that should work for everyone and should be inviting for people, not just from the town, but from outside. Right, and I, I understand what you're saying. And part of the reason for me asking this is I'm also trying to definitely take into account, you know, potential noise, lighting, other impacts on the, you know, residences that aren't too far away, for example. But oh. um, Oh, for that subject, there's a few options. I, I have proposed a, and approved a fence um, on my Western neighbor's property. Um, I, I saw I saw feedback and, and having not got some, I did my best. I, I researched acoustic fencing and I am going to build a bespoke uh, shadow box fence and have um, uh, greenery growing on it 
as it's the best solution to actually stop noise heading that way and lighting. Um, everything lighting design wise, I have my lighting designers, which, you know, those guys are, I'm, I, you know, I'm using lighting designers, right? Who would have thought I'd ever hire a lighting designer, but they're doing so to make sure that there's no light going in a kid's window down the street. Um, but that said is even if I do all of that, I'm the immediate neighbor and I can build a wall directly across the street. There are floodlights already blasting down on a, on a dumpster. So while I, I'm going to mitigate everything, and, and I think Paul would probably even agree that I've done my best to knock on doors and, and offer up the information. Um, I can only ask, like I said, that the, the town give me a shot because um, I do live here. Every day I live in this town, my dog stole a tennis ball from your dog at the dog park or at dog swim day. You know what I'm saying? Like, this isn't, this isn't some act. This is who I am. I'm I, I clearly, I'm speaking openly and I've told you I'm going to park illegally in my own parking lot. So I'm, I'm not putting on an act or anything. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I, it's your call, I guess, but I'm going to do my damnedest to be a good neighbor because the, you are all my neighbors. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, speaking of neighbors, um, I may be speaking only for myself, and I'll take that risk at 11 o'clock. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that we're going to be in a position to vote on this this evening because you don't have the agreement with, with Hart for the parking, and you don't have feedback from the town yet on the use of, of the yard. Um, so I'm anticipating that we're going to continue this hearing. Um, and unless I, I hear ask? a tremendous, tremendous outcry from my fellow commissioners, I would uh, at this point like to open it up to members of the public who have um, probably worn deep holes in their chair cushions at this point, sitting for four hours to see if uh, any of them want to speak on this application. Uh, Paul. So uh, this is Christina, Paul's wife. So okay. I'll talk first. Um, and one of the things that I had been looking at um, is I know there are a lot of plans. And so I think it looks nice on paper, some of the things, but one of my concerns was um, uh, in looking at research that has been done, like in 2019, um, one of the plans was for you, uh, Micah, to bring a brewery and have tasting room along the Connecticut River in Rocky Hill at 45 Evans Road. And there are a bunch of plans presented to the Rocky Hill Planning and Zoning Commission, um, which would need to authorize a zone change. One of the questions I had was, was such a zone change ever authorized? And what was the plan with that? Uh, it seems to me that there was a bigger space, I, I guess something like 3,000 square feet of space for, you know, uh, to, con to construct whatever it is and another 4,000 square foot space and more parking. And uh, there were also talks of purchasing the land owned by that ADC Enterprises company. So one of my concerns is that, I mean, everything sounds all nice and fair, um, but I, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's sort of concerning to me, that part. And I also find that one of the questions I keep running back to is where is all of the money coming from to do all of that? I know there was some crowdfunding going on and um, it worries me that, you know, there's a nice business plan and everything, but um, it, it worries me that with all the ideas that are there, do you have the money to do it? And will that money run out? So those are just two of my concerns. There are definitely other concerns about noise issues and parking that I did mention, or my husband and I did mention to Micah. 
um, where we talked about um, things like the dumpster and uh, we talked about like this acoustic fence and we talked about things like the smell from the brewing house and you mentioned there wasn't going to be any big smell or anything like that um so there are many concerns i have as a uh neighbor and pretty much uh i feel like on the other end there is also talks behind our house the heirloom market is planning on bringing their own sort of um liquor business as well, and they'll be having um, patio seating and all of that. So I have tons of concerns in terms of uh, beside, behind, and then there's up the road again, another brewery company that is possibly going to be coming in and doing pizza dough and some other sort of business. So here are all the things flying in my head and I have the, eight-year-old who needs to sleep at night and we have to work and all these things swirling in my brain. So it's all mixed up and jumbled and uh, I need to find a, a, a space to figure it all out. So uh, that's all my two cents. I'll let my husband speak. <laughs> okay, thank you. May I just, uh, I got approval for that zoning. If you based just to answer that question, it's a that's a matter of public record. The zone was changed. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Is there anyone else? Paul, uh, Mr. Commission, uh, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, uh, if you would entertain my comments. Yep. Okay. So I'm um, Paul Brady. I'm the co-owner of sixteen eighteen Church Street. Um, I will say um, that I have to give it to Micah of all the people that have tried to do anything with that building since I since we've been owners of this property. He has, I, in my view, made the most effort to uh, communicate with us, at least. Um, that's something I will give him. However, I will say after listening to this presentation tonight, I am trembling and a little bit terrified because there is nothing that sounds like anything is concrete here. And that worries me. Um, as a homeowner and a landlord, I have tenants here. Um, I also have to speak for their quality of life um, at the end of the day. And believe it or not, um, when I bought this property, I inherited these tenants. And so they have been here significantly longer than me. Um, and uh, they have explained to me uh, some of the reasons of why they like this area. Um, and as most residents in the old Weathersfield district do, they uh, like the, you know, the quietness, the ambience. Yes, there is the Webby and Steve may have a wedding every so often and, you know, there's music and so on, but we're talking about now that there is going to be patio space off across from the outcrops from Village Pizza's parking lot. Um, while Micah has this tentative agreement for parking with the Heart Seat Company, um, the reality is you can't police or probably you won't police your patrons because it'll come at a cost and you're probably not willing to spend that money to do that. The reality of it is, as I explained to Micah when he was at my when he was here and he caught me in the driveway before, when I was trying to leave, it is not so much as the business owner, but the patrons. We have seen what has happened over on Center Street, which is not far from me. They are my neighbors. And my wife, my kid, and I, we walk this area. And the reality of it. It is on some days, it's very tough to go across that four-way intersection. There's some cars that don't even want to stop and wait on pedestrians, which by the way, is a state law. I mean, it's tough, right? And for him to say that he's going to do six parking spaces and all his, um, well, I guess his 18 employees are going to park at the back, if I'm understanding that correctly, on his property. And then you're going to expect that your patrons are going to go park over at, you know, the, the hard seat company and to walk back 
Well, let's be let, let's 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 juggle a scenario here. I mean, in 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 about you know forty two degree weather, and somebody wants to go hang out with their friend to get a beer. You think they're going to be trying to go get the furthest parking spot to walk back over to your establishment to spend their money? I know I wouldn't do it. That's reality. And you talk about the young generation. Well, guess what? We are that generation. We're both millennials here. That's the reality. Yeah, we like our apps and everything. And the other thing I will definitely tell you for the people that have millennial uh, children that are sitting on this commission, and I know a couple that do, we are not going to inconvenience ourselves to spend our money with you. That's the reality. So I don't know any of my millennial friends that would park at that distance to come up to this establishment to spend their money. Um, the other thing that is also troubling too is the fact of the matter you mentioned about live music and when you when you first when you initially met with us i believe you and i'm and i'm i'm almost pretty certain because I, I went back and i had to double check myself to ask my wife if i was going crazy you mentioned to us that you were not looking to open past 10 o'clock that was your very first meeting with us before any of this before you even did anything over at that building Oh, only to find out that you uh, submitted an application to go until 11. And then when you were here, you say, well, it's possible that I will go past 11 if I have an event, which means that take holidays out of it. If it's not a holiday and someone wants to have an event at your establishment, that means that you be playing, whether it be music or whatever it is, my kid's bedroom window is directly across from that area. So which means I'm going to have an unrest, you know, a restless kid to go to school or something like that. We currently fight with parking here. There are a couple of times that I have to walk over to Village Pizza to figure out or, or try to figure out whose part, whose car is what, because people either park their car in front of our house and push their nose out and block the tenants from coming in. Or in the case of us, we had to basically edge the, um, the the other side of the bank, hug the bank in to come in. So all of those things, like we like, like um, I'm sure you've heard about the parking and everything. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. At one point, I at least felt a little bit good about this application when you mentioned that it was not going to be a, um, it, 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 it was not going to be a large scale thing. You're, we're just doing this to, um, move small amount of product only to find out that you were looking to add a restaurant component to it. So things change. And it's like every time we listen to this or I read something, it changes. And tonight was one of those things. And I will be completely honest with you. I do not feel good whatsoever about this application. I don't. And I mean, it's so sh it, it is shaky. Nothing is in stone and it's concerning for someone that is spending so much money on their property to do uh, to to put it back to what it was historically and it's not cheap it, it it would be definitely a disservice to us to spend that much money only for you to put to notch up something over there that is going to adversely affect our property um that's that's my those are my thoughts um you know are there some other things that I have that I thought were concerning as far as it went with the commission um, in April 6, when the language for uh, to accept breweries and microbreweries into the zoning uh, zoning language was amended. We, I mean, I felt like as a resident, I wasn't given the opportunity to do much research to be able to better understand that. And, and I wasn't the only person that felt that way. This was done, you know, in the height of COVID. And as, uh, you know, Mr. Kerr eloquently put it, he got the zoning, the zoning language change. It this almost seems self-serving. At the end of the day, you know, I'm a taxpayer. The, the residents of 16 Church Street, uh, of, um, the, of, of the residents of Church Street are taxpayers. I believe at least that that there was supposed there could have been a bulletin something out that this type of thing that would affect people's people's quality of life 
should be out there for the public should be pro should probably be on you know a, a public hearing stake or something so to to actually have that happen it was I, I i don't feel real i don't feel good about it um so I, I will just you know cut my comments short for right here and um if there is more time i will ask a few other questions or make a few other comments that i have but thank you guys for listening okay thank you uh is there anybody else in the public that wishes to comment on this application I just want to make sure, are there letters that were received? I say that knowing the answer. Yeah. Um, uh, I, we will comment on that, but I just wanted to, to kind of respect the presence of people who were here in case they wanted to, to speak in person tonight. Paul, it sounds like this is your shot to probably, you know, mention right. points. And Mr. Chair, Mr. Mr. Warren, it's getting late. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, I um, I so I'd like to ask you um, some additional questions if you don't mind. So um, my first question is this: I know they've decided to change the um, the uh, the parking area from blacktop to uh, a more of a pervious um, type of uh, parking lot but my other question is what happens when you have to do snow removal and all of that stuff where you plan on putting that and um on what corner i uh, i guess will we didn't see that in the plans of where there would be a dumpster or anything like that um so um i don't know if maybe either anyone on the commission has any insight on that or uh peter um but um didn't see that uh those are um, some concerns of mine. And um, uh, another concern that I have, um, well, I also realized that there was the, that there, the second handicap ramp was gonna be on that side. And so you said you're gonna put six parking spaces, what direction or how are they facing? Um, and what type of lighting was gonna be back there um, if that area was going to be um, you know, if, if there's going to be any light lighting back there. Um, and also for the second floor, since it's not going to be utilized, are there any plans as it relates to some of those windows that are um, either missing glass or stuff or, you know, are, are those windows? Are those glass going to be replaced um, or are we going to continue to have the plywood in the windows? Am I able to answer the questions or no? Mike, I think we've lost Rich, but yes, please. Um, okay. Yeah, please I answer wanna... those. Yeah, uh, so first question was regarding lighting, uh, Paul. I hired a lighting consultant to help actually to make sure that I don't put lights towards you. And in order to get those lights uh, installed, that lighting plan done, it has to go back to historic commission. And that gives you the ability to vocalize your plans and get your approval there, which I dare say probably helps you get more of what you want. 
but I will also bring that plan to you before ever bringing it to them. Okay. Um, my, my really, my key reason for that is I, I don't know how much I'm able to mount lighting on the fence pointing away from your building, but I'll do that as much as humanly possible. And I'll have the absolute minimum amount of lighting out there because I respect the, your kid's bedroom being facing on my side. Uh, secondarily, um, you mentioned the parking. Uh, it is on the site plan. So um, I, I, I guess just it should be visible on, on, on the site plan that went out. But if, if you like, I can I sent you the site plan um, and you're welcome. Like I said, you can always call me. Um, I can show it to you again. It's um, I believe <laughs> there are three spaces on the left that face the fence and three spaces facing uh, north. Um, all the windows upstairs, any broken glass, the panes are being replaced. We're repairing all windows and doors in the building as per our conversation at Historic District and that was approved by Historic District Commission. I can't make any changes beyond that without their approval as you're aware. Um, the dumpster is outlined in the plans as are the reliefs of the fence around the dumpster and the gates around the dumpster. Um, I think, was that all your questions? Okay. Um, Peter, just one more thing. I mean, uh, was there, um, maybe this is for you, Peter, was there any type of, um, uh, does the town have any type of study or was there anything uh, submitted as far as um, the, as far as the odor of, from a brewery and what are the impacts on um, residential areas that are in close proximity to um, the breweries? So uh, there, there obviously has not been a study. Um, I did, we did pose that question to Micah. Uh, I'll let Micah respond, but as far as um, we understand any storage of the byproduct of the brewing process will be stored in the basement and removed from the property every day to a local farm, I believe. I'll let Micah maybe explain to you in more detail what that uh, entails, but um, based on our inquiries, we really don't think there's a much of a, a concern for that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Peter. So yeah, Paul, it's, um, I think I said every day or two because uh, it might not always be able to be every day, but as, as he said, we will be storing it on site in the basement out of view, out of smell for you. And um, it'll be brought to Hayes Farm over in Rocky Hill or be picked up by the farmer himself. Uh, and the reason I say effectively daily is because the spent grain becomes an important part of the food for the cows and the poultry. And he'd rather have the free stuff than buy it fresh, so. It's also more nutrients in it for the for the critters because it ferments a little bit, but that's another story. Okay. Is there anyone else in the public that has any comments or questions at this point? Just so that uh, the record is complete, I'll identify the correspondence that we've received um letters of support from john yaman 1178 silestine highway beth and mike adams 56 marsh street eric albrecht 8 megat park uh, nick ballisteri bruce barter 165 beverly road cindy mcdonald barton 24 judd road javier bello 231 clearfield road Shelley Blank, 165 Beverly Road, uh, Daniel Bowman, 41 Longview Drive, Garrett Kelly, 67 Fairview yep. Drive, Steve Caprio, 311 Garden Street, uh, Matthew Carew, 36 Hillcrest Avenue, David Caulfield, 16 Willard Street, Daniel Cavanaugh, 2 Megat Park, Paul Cloutier, 161 Jordan Lane, Lisa Coppola, Coppola, 268 Edward Street, uh, Miles England and Taylor Catone, 60 North Brick Lane, uh, Mike Crowell, 187 Garden Street, Joe Diston, 97 State Street, Dorcas Dominguez, 89 Woodshed Drive, uh, Michael and Jessica Dowd, 283 Brimfield Road, uh, William Drew, 
340 Walcott Hill, Cody and Daniel, Danielle Gabor, 9 Carnside Drive, John Gothier, 6 South Bridge in Cromwell, Jessica Grady, 36 Old Pepperidge Lane, uh, Roland Grenier, 32 Westmont Road, Sean Abbott, 73 Wells Farm Drive, John Biancomano, 48 Beverly Road, Don Bon Vesuto, 30 Orchard Hill Drive, Joe Byrne, 90 Broad Street, uh, Christina Carpino, 90 Darwell Drive, Dr. Joseph Ciarcia, 14 Swing Lane, Brandon Quarter, 16 Rainer Lane, Marion Dan Diversa, 5 Gristmill Road, Alita DeLuca, 17 Hubbard Place, Amy DeVoe, 89 Hartford Avenue, Doug and Ashley Elliott, 30 Broad Street, Daniel Erickson, 170 Oxyoke Drive, David Fleming, 440 Church Street, Will Gorton, 468 Main Street, Dan Harrison, 21 Wilcox Street, uh, Zach Hyde, 10 Hubbard Place, number 10, 21. I don't know. What is it? The meeting they have for Malacca's next door. Now? Yeah, that should be going on from seven o'clock. And that guy. Rich, do we lose you there? Ryan, you want to pick up where he left off? Am I <laughs> unmuted again? Oh, there yeah, you go. You're there back. you go. I saw him go mute, no. and I knew he was going to come back eventually. Yeah, I haven't touched anything. Christine Maltesi, 40 Trivet Lane. Um, Joe Massaro, 75 Garden Street. Diane Murphy, 63 Schoolhouse Crossing. Brian Peshka, 22 Spring Street. Um, this letter actually relates to the other application. Jennifer Reiner, 78 Merriman Road. Jane Rhodes, 69 State Street. Timothy Rhodes, uh, Westfield, New York. Tracy and Bill Sesco, 16 Belmont Street. Uh, Sanjay Shah, 808 Silestine Highway. William Snelling, 172 Clearfield Road. Cindy Zerblis, 119 Two Rod Highway. Uh, Pete and Christine Kuzma, 101 Two Rod Highway. Uh, Peter Spangenberg, Old Pure Lane. Got one for Avalon Place, Catherine Whitaker, 17 Wilcox Street. Billy Wilson, two, uh, six Swing Lane. And that is. Yeah. That's all I find. That's a lot. All right. Mr. Chairman, just all for right. the record, those are all four approvals, right? They were all. Yes. No negatives. Wow. Is the. Uh, Owner in the upper left hand corner have their hand up? Yes. Okay. Um, just please give us your name and address for the record. My name is uh, Art Shombanos. I uh, live in 46 Patriot Lane. Uh, me and my brother, we own Village Pizza next door to the, uh, the brewery that has been proposed uh, for some reason. Uh, we uh, been left out on the see uh, uh, plants in there. Our parking is a problem to begin with right now. And uh, the town knows it, uh, the town planners, uh, engineers, they all know it for the last 40 years that we've been in town uh, and it's getting worse every day. Uh, 
we already have people who would say uh, participating in the building next door, you know what I mean, uh, workers that they park in our parking spot. Uh, we are in a difficult situation. Uh, although we have cameras and we watch what's going on 24 uh, seven, we don't have the time or the expense to hire somebody to protect our parking, which we pay a top dollar for it. Uh, the town engineers, they know that for a long, long time, that is a big problem. Bringing another uh, 200, 300 people, I'm sure it's good for business for everybody. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting in a fight with our neighbors every single day, that is not uh, good for us. Uh, the town has to be very, very careful by approving uh, that uh, brewery because of the uh, parking issue, what all these things gonna park? If you need 15, 20 workers, uh, they need 20 spaces. They're gonna need two cars, I mean, 20 cars. Where are they gonna park? Uh, I don't know if the property is connected with Comstock so they can make some kind of residence. Some people would have parked it there at night when uh, uh, Comstock is closed. You know, the, but I don't see how this, uh, uh, project at that magnitude of uh, two and 300 people is going not to have effect on the little business that we own there. Um, that's a real concern and uh, we want uh, the planning and uh, department and uh, to uh, look very, very careful into it because I, we can see uh, safety problems, uh, parking problems, and all this. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak tonight? Yes, this is Norm Cavoli from Center Street again. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yes, again, it's, uh, I moved on to Center Street before the Charles Restaurant came in. Uh, when that came in, uh, there were much traffic, and they parked on Center Street. Most people parked correctly with no problems. Some didn't. A lot of neighbors complained about not the restaurant noise, but the people coming in and out of the cars at night, yelling to each other, loud voices. Uh, but I think with the brewery, I, I think I agree that there is a perceived parking problem. If someone's going to come to the brewery, they're going to find a legal place to park and walk to it. Unlike what we talked about earlier with the takeout pizza, no one's gonna park 100 feet away for a takeout pizza. They will to spend an hour or two hours in a brewery. I think the major concerns I have, I walk by there a lot, the looks of the building, will it be completed? Will it be half done? Uh, the noise, the structure, that sort of thing. I think the parking is a concern, but not a major concern. Okay. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak on this application tonight? I'll take that as a no. Um, one more comment if you want. A Red Sox yeah, game, yep. two to two on the eighth inning. <laughs> or ninth inning, excuse me. So, yeah. Two to two? Two to two. Thank you. Two all. High game. Ninth inning. Motion to close. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, as I mentioned about a half hour ago, um, at least my impression is that we need to we may need to continue this until there's um, until the next meeting so that there's an opportunity opportunity for the applicant to uh, nail down the parking with um, part C and also to get uh, some kind of feedback from from the town on the um, use of the town portion of the lawn that's shown as part of the application. May I, um, pardon me, sir. Um, yeah. As the applicant, may I, I, I understand we may need to continue this for the site plan and, and I, I can, I can, you know, I can understand that. 
Um, but when it's the town, um, you know, we're talking, it's, it's been about four months since I first reached out to the town and haven't heard back. So, you know, my, my zoning is being held up by, you know, inaction. And, you know, I'll work with Heart C, that's not a problem. But can I, is it possible to get a um, potential ruling on the change of use, if not the site plan? Because I think that's part of it, right? Um, if I get a change of use, then it at least allows me to start pulling building permits and building and, and getting the plumbing sorted out. Because uh, as I said, this, this, work, this building needs a ton of work and um, that'll at least help me be able to open for spring um, or, you know, in the middle of the winter, maybe. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that's a thing, but I just, if, if it's going to, how do I know the town's going to get back to me by next meeting or within another three or four months? I've been waiting a while. Mr. Chair, if I may, um... You mentioned earlier, um, it, and just and just like I, I mentioned to you, there are a lot of things in this plan that's not clear. They're not concrete. And again, I'm not here to tell you how to run your commission. You're the chair, and I don't think that an applicant should either. Um, yeah, there's been a decision to continue this. I think in, that this needs further discussion. Um, things that that we read in an application that we thought were concrete are not. Um, it, it read that there was an agreement with Hard Seed, only to find out tonight that there isn't. Um, so those those logistics are not final. And I've heard the language of you know just give me a give me a shot and let's see what happens. I mean, let's see what happens at the expense of the residents that are here. Let's see what happens at the expense of me and my property and my family. I mean that's pretty that's pretty risky at that rate i might have, i might as well buy lottery tickets for crying out loud there's more i mean there's there's a greater probability there than this the reality is um things are not concrete with this application they're not clear there's still ambiguity in with this application and so i think it needs to continue i'm not, again i'm not going to tell you how to run your commission and i don't think that the applicant should either you made a decision and I think you it was already put on the table and I think you should probably vote on it. Yeah, I, I, I'll go through the, uh, the, the courtesy of listening to the other nine members of the commission to, to see what they have to, to say on the subject. Um, I mean, to, to address the, the applicant's immediate concern about you know, what if the town doesn't get back to him in a reasonable amount of time? I think there, you know, there, at least in my mind, there's a big difference between do you have 33 parking spaces and do you have permission to use a sliver of the lawn uh, in terms of whether this application is viable? Um, so I, I think depending on what progress is made with either or both of those issues between now and the next meeting, I, I think it's, you know, yeah, I, I was just I was told that my email was sent by the Heart Seed folks, and so I'm a little surprised you guys don't have that on file. And I apologize for not checking in beforehand, but I mean there is we have a, certainly a tentative agreement, and there should be an email on file. But uh, you know, I guess that's just truly on me for not double checking beforehand. So, Mr. Well, Chairman, there, there, is, there is an e George, there, there I make is a an motion on... to continue this uh, there, there... hearing. There is an email on file that that says they're checking with their insurance people. Okay, well, right. I, I I think that's fair to be noted then. So I mean, I'm not. It's not that I'm making it up. That's all. <laughs> okay. All right. Right. Yep. All right. Mr. Um, Chairman, George has. We good... want a motion to continue this hearing. Yes, please. Okay, I've made it. All right. Is there George. a second? A second. All right. Second from Tom. Motion by George, second by Tom. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. And Peter is going to be voting on this one. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. That hearing is continued to Wednesday, November 3rd. Um, the last one is application 2098-21Z, um, 
under our bylaws, we can't open a hearing after 11 o'clock unless we suspend the rules. Um, so do we want to suspend the rules only for the purpose of opening the hearing and continuing it the next time? When you say open the Hello. hearings, Chairman, what do you what do you mean? Make Just... a motion to do that, Mr. Chairman. Make a motion to suspend. Oh, you mean just yeah, so I mean, we don't notice it again and can continue right. it? Exactly. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, motion to open the hearing on twenty ninety eight twenty one Z and continuing it to November third. I think that was made by George. I guess so. Yeah. And uh, we'll give the second to Joe. Any okay. discussion? Not no all in favor say aye. 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 Sorry. Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, minutes Minutes of September 8th. Move, move to approve. Second. Okay. Second. All right, uh, Joe moved, Peter seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, minutes of October 5th. Motion to approve. Okay. Motion by Peter. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. All Chairman, right. George, uh, I won't. Unless you need my vote, I won't be voting on this. Okay. I wasn't there. Um, I'll, also, um, uh, I'll also abstain, Mr. Chair, since I wasn't able to make that meeting. Okay. All right. We're good then. Um, all right. Uh, October 5th, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, and George and Tom abstain. All right. Um, Anything from staff or do we? The, the only thing is just to let you know, we, we did get an appeal of the um, subdivision uh, by Ted May. Um, so I, I copy of that was, I think, sent in the supplemental packet, just so you have that uh, for your information. All right, thank you. All right, any other public comments? on matters other than those that we had the public hearings on? Uh, Mr. Only Chairman, one? do you wanna just discuss the uh, in-person versus Zoom meetings for our next meeting? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do we feel? Do, do we wanna go back in person or do we wanna continue this or do we wanna wait until we don't have to wear masks, or does anybody have a strong preference one way or the other? Mr. Chairman, I, 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 I just want to understand what will it be like? I mean, uh, I understand masks. Are, are we going to have to be, what, every other seat or further apart? I, I just want to make sure that we're not so dispersed that it becomes ineffectual. It's maybe better to stay where we are if that's the case. I think uh, the council has been meeting in person, and if I'm not mistaken, they are sitting in the same seats as they would normally. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but my my recollection is they've been sitting in the same seating that they would normally sit in. They they do have the audience um, spread out a little bit, the chairs spread out. Uh, I think that's the those are the two observations I had. Sounds good to me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, for, for what it's worth, I guess my view is with everything still somewhat unsettled and you know, booster shots not out yet and stuff, I'm I'm comfortable sort of staying the way we've been doing it on Zoom. I think it's been fine. And I think if a couple of these applications tonight, we're gonna generate a whole bunch of people. You know, I, I guess I'm not right now I'm not seeing the benefit of being together, still not normal, you know, outweighing our ability to do it on Zoom, so that's just my thought. Also, Peter, okay. will we be I respecting the public? I tend to concur with uh, Joe, Mr. Chair. 
right. Peter, what, by, what they, not being, by not being virtual, we restrict the public attending the meetings? By not being virtual. Um, I mean, just simply because we're saying to the public, you must come into a populated place of gathering for a meeting. We're opposed to a going populated virtual. Place if you sit apart. Yeah, I, I, I guess you could definitely make that argument too that you're restricting, yeah. you know, those people who, um, you know, would well, prefer to watch it on Zoom. Yeah. So, Peter, is the town hall open to the general public, or is it by appointment now, or how's it working? Nope. It, it's open to the public. Uh, however, you have to wear a mask. Okay. So anyone can just come into your office anywhere, anytime. There's, it's back to business as usual, just a yes. mask. Yeah, it's been like that for quite a while. Okay. Still, I prefer to see my fellow commissioners. This is George, and uh, you know, I've I've kind of missed it. I also think you can see the uh, on the screen there the uh, plans better than you can on these little uh, screens, and uh, also just generally people seeing them and uh, the reality of it makes uh, makes more sense to me than this Zoom. I just don't like it. Zoom has pre, has sometimes fouled up the computers and or the computer service like it did one night. And uh, I just don't like it. So for that reason, I prefer to go to a town hall town hall meeting like we always did. I you know I don't want to go back there for the winter snows, but uh, hey, that's the way it goes. I guess I'm, Mr. Chair. I am I am listening to Joe Hammer and Dave Edwards though about the general public and their comfort level. That anyone anyone could either phone in, zoom in. That that's I'm 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 looking way beyond myself and my comfort on this, Joe. That's what the way I really look at this. And I think for anybody who was going to sit at this meeting tonight for five hours, including neighbors and public with a mask on, it's not comfortable experience versus you know maskless at home right now and and also, another uh, factor also we'd have to have 198 pages printed for us to look at <laughs> during the meeting because we don't have we don't have tablets we can't refer to anything that's not in print we're having some uh, gatherings up at the uh, in my church, I'm involved in, in a number of different committees there. And, uh, you know, we're wearing masks. It, it, it's, George, I understand what you're saying, but it's, it's, in my opinion, it's not really that comfortable in a group setting to be sitting even close to each other with masks. 90% of reading body language is <laughs> below your nose. You know, it's, it's the rest <laughs> of your face. When everybody's standing and uh, looking at each other, it looks like you, you're the banditos there. It, it, it's not that comfortable anyway. So uh, at least with the Zoom, you can see people's faces in full. So mm -hmm. I am inclined to say until we can remove the masks, we should probably stick to this course. And I'll just chime in. I'll just say that like, we're no less like effective remotely and we're giving more people an opportunity to join in, uh, you know, online. So, you know, I don't really see a need. All right. So we'll have this same conversation in two weeks. <laughs> Sounds right. good. But, okay. But, uh, Peter, we... I'm sorry. I, I was just going to ask, is, is there any, any talk in the town about removing masks in Wethersfield? Uh, I think that's going to, as Rich indicated, be discussed regularly as, as we keep monitoring the situation. So, um, but at this point, uh, masks are uh, required, um, but the, that the could council change. meets with masks on, Peter, right? Um, I and think, yeah. I, the I, audience. Yeah, I'm trying to, the audience definitely. So, um, and I think, you know, as the council members are discussing things, the masks come on and off, but I think they're mostly on. All right. So at least the next meeting we'll be doing through Zoom. Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else? 
All right. Thank you all for your endurance and patience. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second, George. All right. Motion by Joe, second by George. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Have a good evening. Good night. Okay. Good, night. Good, night. good morning. Good night, folks. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Just feels like it.